this bit. Got a lot of buttons. Hello, everyone, and welcome to One on One with Tommy Sotomayor. Now, many of you guys know you typically will go and watch this show on the One on One channel, but I'm going to put it on after. Uh, so we're on TNN Raw 3. I got you bouncing around all over the place and playing hopscotch on YouTube. But I have a young lady on here in which I had actually saw her in a group, and I forgot what I was supposed to be talking about or to, with her. But I, I'm pretty sure she was doing some ratchet shit, so I'm going to have to do my research and go back and see the ratchet shit. But right now... She said she had become, like, not a fan of mine, but a lurker. So as she became a lurker, she saw some things. So somebody's already said they on, they on your side. She ain't said nothing. How you on her side already? You do talk about I'm on her I side. I'm sorry. They already know. Wait. Let the people speak. They already know because you was lurking. You ain't been a, accuse me of lurking with your lurking ass. Hold on. Wait, uh, you were that. lurking back. I was, look, I wasn't, no, I wasn't I was lurking. lurking. There's a difference. Looking and lurking. No, 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 no. See, what I was doing was I was going around trying to find ratchet people doing ratchet shit. Well, look at him. Okay. That's it. I was just, I was on the prowl for ratchetity. He was on the prowl for ratchet shit. And what he found instead was an intelligent. That is not <laughs> what I, I'm pretty sure that ain't what I saw that night. Studious. I'm pretty sure that is not what I saw that night. That's exactly what he's, what, it's what he means to say. See, His intentions. I'm going to say this, y'all. She's smart. She didn't come on when I asked. She waited till I forgot. She said, this nigga's <laughs> old. Give him some time. <laughs> so now I'm on the defensive. And so I have no idea, guys. I have not spoken to her, haven't talked to her, have not set anything up. I'm allowing her to do what I allow a lot of people to do. They want something. They got something to say. I will try to answer as much as I can and try to have dialogue. And um, I want to ask her probably towards the end about that group because I put a lot of things on the website about that group. And... Um, Probably even talked to her a little bit about the video we saw last night, the disgusting video. I don't know if you saw it. The woman who decided to eat her own period blood. It's, we will get to that later. I, I had some nightmares because about that one. Later for that? Like, whoa. <laughs> so many questions on that one. Yes, it no is. No, ma'am. So what I'm going to do is turn it over to you. And um, you go ahead and you ask me what you like. And I will then answer as best as I can. All right. So let's ease on into this. I don't even know if this is easing in. But I've heard first, that before. What is your issue with mm. black women? Like you really have it out for black women. And I just sit back and I watch this and I'm like, wow, he's he's big mad. He's mad mad. Mm. Like what is happening here? Well, I've had a what lot of life that I've lived yeah. and I've seen a lot of things. And mm -hmm. like the woman eating her period blood. Like the woman Paula, it's too common that black women are doing these wild things and they're doing it for something as simple as attention. In the last few days, I did two videos about two black women that between them, they had 21 children. 21 between two women. That yeah. seems impossible. In today's but do you era. realize how polarizing that is? Like to have those sorts of people on your show and then characterize them as you know black women as a whole like that's a that's definitely a representation that you are <laughs> provoking like how could you like that's not every black woman which i'm sure a lot of women say but it's like but i've never said it's everyone acknowledge that though like, but i've never like, said why, it was everyone. like why but i've never you said know it. they want attention why would you give it to them but okay like the woman who had 11 i mean uh who had 11 kids and was pregnant with her 12 because mm -hmm. i gave her the type of attention i gave her do you understand mm -hmm. what she did? She took did her she shit. She took it down. She took her whole channel down. Unlike what people do to Paula is they give her, you go girl, don't let them tell you what to do. So we see it's like having children. Yeah. We've lost this thing in the black community called shame. I've never said all. And you got black women in the comment section telling you right now, he never said all. If I said all, what would make those black women be fans of mine? When you look and you see the video I put up of me being in the show, did you see how many, uh, when I went out to perform live, uh, did you see how many, first off, it was just a shit ton of black people, but. Yeah, of course. Notice how many were females. Notice how many females was, was kept commenting, I'm so glad oh. that I met you. There was one, there was uh, like three black women who came there who literally came there to cuss me out. That's why they came. I'm going to cuss this nigga out. <laughs> Do you know by the time the show ended, they was hugging on me and trying to get my number and find out what hotel I was in. 
Lord. Because they said, you know what? In a small format, you're really harsh. In a larger mm-hmm. format, I understand, which is why I do the one-on-ones. Because if you ask me questions, I can give you a greater answer than a 10-minute clip of you seeing me going off on some fuck shit I just seen. So why do you tend to hone in on the black woman specifically? Because I grew up and you hear people say black women are the backbone of the community. If you're Mm -hmm. going to be the captain of the ship, if you're going to be the coach of the team, every time something goes wrong, who gets the blame? You get the credit when it goes right. Like uh, Bill, uh, excuse me, um, Donald Trump. Because he's the president, if the economy goes down, guess who's going to get the blame? Him. You have to understand if you want that role to be the leader, you have to accept failure as well as success. So black women love to say, like when you told me, it's not all. But if I said black women are beautiful, nobody would say not all. If I said, but you, if I said black women got fat asses, I know plenty of flat ass black women with not a drop of ass. Listen, over here, little booties matter, okay? Well, I saw, I, I saw that, I saw that wall you had on one of your pictures. I said she ain't got nothing in the backyard. Matter. Okay. She got, I said she got a whole bunch on the front porch. Ain't shit in the backyard. It's a cliff. But little booties matter. Yeah, but the, Listen, listen, don't worry about that. Love booty matter. But but the point is, whenever you talk about black women in a positive way as a whole, no one ever says, that's not true. No, so because immediately it's like, yes, queen, here we come. And the, the minute there's criticism, which that's not something I disagree with at all. However, I feel for you as an influential black male, for you to put certain females on your show that are very polarizing and like there's a negative content there. It's like, okay, we know we fucked up. Like we know we fucked up. Cause I'd be looking at bitches like, Ooh, 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 what is you doing? Like, come back. Come on. What are you doing? Like for you, I just feel like there should maybe be a little bit more of a positive aspect there because there is positivity out there. Okay. Well, let me ask you I'm not all rainbows and butterflies, but I'm just saying. All right, Pollyanna, let me ask you a question. Would they, what are you mixed with, first off? Wow, here we go. No, I'm just I curious. Huh? Damn. I'm, no, I'm just curious. You could say you could say whatever. I was a curious question. I'm Dominican and black. Okay, so you mixed with a race and a um, country. Dominican and black, which is the same. Dominican That's what I was about to say. Black. I mean, if you black, you black, if you black and black, you're just black and black. I'm black and black. Okay, because <laughs> well, you know you can't be Dominican and black. You can't be both. Thank you. Okay. Tell other people that. Well, because they're idiots. I say I'm Panamanian. They say he's trying to act like he's white. They're like, like, oh, you Spanish. What's... Yeah, but I'm next door to Haiti too, so. Well, they they yeah. they, they don't get it, and uh, I think black people were never taught that there's a difference between nationality and race, because they they are not taught that. First of all, black is a color; it is not a race. Let's mm-hmm. start there. Yeah, Negro is the race. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but blacks don't like being called black. Negroes. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> You don't know what they want to be called. And they're so dumb, they allow people to call them African-American, which I would never let you call me that one. (laughs) Oh, God, that's so true, though. Like, I hate that question, though. What are you mixed with? Why? Like, why do you put a cap on beauty? This, well, no, no, no. See, now you said, why do you put a cap on beauty? Why why, do you call it beauty? Because that's what everyone does. In order to be a certain level of beautiful you must be mixed with something in other words my You're hair stuck is on long, yourself right? this is my natural hair you stuck on yourself what do you, yeah i'm beautiful what do you mix with i didn't ask you that because of your hair yes people no. ask me that because of my hair all the well, time well see but that but that's so no, oh, but i want to i was going to get to that though i was going to say that what i was going to say is you call yourself black but yeah. what has been your growing up dealing with black women as a because most girls who they look hit. like you? Thank you. That's all I was. Please uh, um, go on with that. Let us know what, what kind of experiences you had. Um, let's see. At the lunch table in high school, wasn't allowed to sit at it. If I was sitting at the lunch table, I was sitting with a bunch of white girls. If I wasn't, I was eating lunch in the bathroom. That's a true story. Wait a minute. Um, were, they, were they like, were you ever physically assaulted by the other girls? No, they threatened me, but like that was, you know, the extent of it because I grew up in um, 
a most I want to say a mostly white sub suburban neighborhood. However, my high school had everybody in it. There was like over three thousand kids. How so, many times were you said you're acting white uh, since you've been alive? Like how old are you? I'm 28. How many times have you been told you're acting white or you're trying to talk white? Too many times to count. So why would black people say that to you? Um, I'm too articulate. When I get upset, instead of getting really ratchet, I start saying words that you can't come back at me with. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to chop your ass down real quick. <laughs> so do and it's going to take you another three weeks to figure out what the fuck I said to you. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> so do you understand... <laughs> Mm -hmm. So do you understand you are taking up for a group of people who talk shit about you? That's what you're doing right now. That would be the equivalent. Yes, I understand that because Why? people are, are so, naive. They, they have no foresight and you know, they're blinded and it's fine. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. So I always find out that people who appear mixed or are, are mixed like Jesse Williams go out of their way to be really black because they want to prove yeah, to the black like, people they're down. Well, maybe I do. Yeah, you maybe do. Because you're taking up for a group of people who don't like you. But that's fine. Most people don't like me. No, that's not true. White girls aren't walking around jealous of you. They're not. This happened. That would be a rare thing. White girls aren't looking at your hair and saying they're jealous of your hair. Yes, they are. How often does this happen? A lot. A lot. So are you kidding me first of all we can't even talk about the white dynamic right now in this day and age because they go out of their way to do a whole lot oh my god i wish my hair looked like yours oh my god i wish my skin looked like yours oh my god i like shut whoop, becky whoop, hold on becky hold okay on. so hold on so let me ask you a question yeah. if it is true that they say uh -huh. this yeah i saw a movie the other day and in that movie, I saw a girl give another girl a compliment. And I know a lot of girls, and I know they do this. They will yeah. compliment another girl, but they don't really mean it. Like, they will say it because girls know that other girls really need to be complimented. Like, dudes, we don't have to compliment each other because we don't live like that. But girls, whole day, they get up, they get dressed. They need to hear another girl tell them that they like their dress to make them feel good. So women well, will... Well, what yeah. we do is not for you. It's for us. I know. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, women like to hear other women tell them that they like what they have. So in essence, right, go ahead. That's bait though. When a woman tells another woman something positive about herself, it's to receive a positive compliment back. It's fishing. You get it? That's Everyone what I was saying. So when you said, I've seen several white girls say to several black girls, a right, positive they want me comment. To them back. That doesn't mean That's that all it was. That was it. They didn't mean it. <laughs> So I was just telling you, they didn't mean it. She don't they want what you got. She's just saying it. <laughs> they meant it. I know plenty of girls do that. They always say that. They'll say yeah, it, but if they fucked hair, around and woke up and had Susie it, they'd the be mad. Hair. Hold on. Hold on. Becky mm -hmm. with the good hair wants Susie with the nappy hair. She does. Okay. Yeah, but but you don't have the quote unquote nappy hair. If you did, that's why the black girls wouldn't the black girls wouldn't be bothered by you. Do you understand? Yeah, it's not, not cool being in not. the middle. It's not no. cool being in the middle. Like no. what you let me tell you what you're doing. You're the four foot six person walking around midgets talking about some, yeah, we have problems. No, you're taller than us. You're just well, not as tall as them. So because you're no. not as tall as them and no, you know you can't fit in with them, the, you're trying to lord over us. The root of the issue is that we have been forced fed what beauty is supposed to look like. Women don't even You just know forced us to believe that you're beautiful. You just forced us to believe that you're beautiful. You said it. I know I am. I you don't said give it. a fuck. I believe it. See? If you believe it because I believe it, that's more power to me. More people need to walk around talking about they believe they're beautiful. Be like, okay, you're beautiful. Yes. So, but, but then wouldn't that be force fed? That has nothing to do with their confidence or mm -hmm. my confidence. Like, whatever. Like, write that today. Black girls were going crazy on Facebook and people sent it to me about this some white girl. And I guess she tans herself. You saw that post? They were pissed no. at this girl. She's trying to be black. I was like, no, she's all not. All white girls tan. Like, I'm from New York. They all tan. What do, what do you well, mean? Well, I, I didn't understand why they were saying she's trying to be black. She's not trying to be black. They don't tan to get black. That's she's a stupid thing to, to say. <laughs> yeah, that, what I'm saying, they don't tan to get black. This is a stupid Wait. thing to say. Because if they call a woman your color black, then black people wouldn't have a problem with you. And that's the scary thing. 
if you don't acknowledge you're black like Tiger Woods, whenever he uh, say he's not black, there's a problem. Uh, whenever, uh, if, like with uh, Jesse Williams, that was sad. He stood up for black women, but as soon as he got him a white woman, there was a problem. They hated him now. But his mom is white. Is he literally not supposed to find white women attractive at all? It's ridiculous. I mean, a lot of times I feel like men growing up find a lot of qualities in women that are, you know, parallel to their mothers. So, no, it's not unreasonable. But at the same time, I don't know why we can't separate love and race. Like, you know, I don't think anyone really goes out there and says, oh, I'm going to fall in love with a person that looks like this. Like, sometimes shit just happens. But that's what I'm saying. But it seems like we black women. Go. But notice, it seems like black women only, only accept when yeah. they get a white man or a man of another race. Like, there's a woman right now that runs around. Her name is, uh, I forgot what her name is. Uh, but she's so called the dark skin advocate. She says she wants everybody to believe that dark skin women are pretty. And she's tired of the people not saying that dark skin women are pretty and dark skin men have this issue with dating dark skin women. And they all want to get a mixed chick or a white chick. And she's tired of it. Well, three years into her campaign, guess who she's with now? A white man, a light skin man, real high oh. yellow man. After telling everybody else it was wrong to do it. And she said, well, no, Everybody's supposed to find dark skinned women attractive, so this is not a problem. She said, I'm just tired of uh, dark skinned men being with non dark skinned women. I was like, that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. But if you but notice the fact right that now, we're still talking about it is a problem. Yes. So when I bring up things, and I'm going to go back to letting you ask me questions, um, but when I bring up things about black women specifically, it's because these, this is the group that does the most talking, that's out front the most. Yeah. Black dudes just allow you to do whatever it is you do. We don't yeah. fuck with Serena Williams. We let her go on about her business. We don't fuck uh, with... We fuck with Serena Williams because we're like, sis, really? Well, here's the problem That's with what... Serena Williams. My problem. I said something about it because it was strange when she had people like... Uh, with regular black dudes was trying to talk to her. She was keeping them niggas on the low and was just basically fucking them. She got this corny well, ass white dude and he was the best... She can only go lighter from that. I well, mean, that's how I felt. Well, see, but that's what I'm saying, though. But, like... When a black dude does something like that, like look at what happened with Michael B. Jordan. He did Rest nothing wrong. Rest in peace. But it's what I'm saying. He did nothing wrong. He was on a damn boat with non-black people. I mean, but it's just like, you know, you have all this hope. <laughs> what hope? That's what I'm saying. That's scary. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm all for equality and love and bullshit and all that. But it's like still in the back of your mind, there's like all this hope for like the black man. You're like, oh, yes, I could be with him. And then you're like, oh, that's what he chooses. Never mind. So why aren't black men running around pissed the fuck off at all these black women who we wish we had them, but they chose a white man? Um... <laughs> Because a black man looks at a black woman and is like, you want to deal with her? Take her. That's why. So it's my, let me tell you something. It's her. probably a lot of men in your life that you didn't talk to. And I'm pretty sure it would hurt their feelings because they, they wanted a chance with you. You didn't give them a chance, but they ain't going around on your page now hating on you because of it. Lies. Okay, so it's dudes on your page now going off on you because you didn't talk to them. Point me to it. I'm on your page. <laughs> I'd like to no, see this. they're not bold enough to go on my page. They stay in the DMs, though. Like, really, that's what you're doing? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Though. Everybody hate behind closed doors. That's what that's I what mean, you yeah. need to do. No one really want to hate in public, but at but the black same women time, literally will hate in public. They tried the, to boycott Black Panther because they found out that niggas wasn't with white but with black chicks when they went to the pre premieres. That's what that make no sense. They boycotted Luke under. Cage because they found out. Did you see Luke Cage go on the Wendy Williams show? And, okay. and all the women was talking about how fine he was. And then he said, oh, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm married. And they showed his wife. Them bitches booed. They booed. Who because does that? There have, <laughs> there's been so many decades of just hate and slander and shame against black women when they finally see something of value, a man that seems like he has the potential to live up to their expectation in their mind. You mean a and nigga with they money? See what in their mind he settles for. It just continues. It continues. No, it continues the conversation that we're less than. It's like, well, shit. 
You know, I'm, I wasn't white enough. I wasn't light enough. My hair wasn't straight enough. It's like I wasn't submissive enough. I talked too much. Let's like, just they weren't trying all to the be submissive. That we are told that we do when we see a man that we actually like look up to. They didn't and, want him until he got money. How do you think that? Listen, dark- nobody wants nobody until they got money. Ma'am, let saying. me ask you a question. How do you think that dark skinned man, along with me and several other dark skinned men, feel when y'all don't want us when we ten? You didn't want us when we twenty. But soon as we get to the NBA, or soon as we get a fucking hot record, now you want us, and we should choose you when you didn't want us when we didn't have it. <laughs> The light skinned nigga don't have no wait, 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 hold on one second. The light skinned nigga didn't have no job, just like I didn't, but he got a whole lot of pussy. The light skinned nigga, he got all the pussy, and I didn't get to sit around and complain about that shit. I just worked my ass off, got what I wanted, now I'm supposed to be with you. That don't make listen, sense. Listen, and then forty years from now, she's gonna be telling her kids how you was the best husband and you was the best man, and she gonna tell them how their father wasn't shit. So what what do you want? I don't know. It's a give what, and take. What I'm saying is like somebody named like um what's what's it Tyrese? I remember the first time I saw Tyrese. He was a oh, Coca Cola commercial, and he got on the bus. He was nobody big at that point, mm-hmm. but he got on a bus and he had on headphones and he was singing and he had a beautiful voice. Yeah. You know what my mom said to me, and I think I was about fifteen. What? That nigga black as hell. Really? That was the only words that came out of my mother's mouth. He'll tell you nobody found him attractive. Yet as soon as he got money and he's, he put the people who were attracted to him, then there's a fucking problem. Black women are fucking assholes because they treat people like crap. But then if you get money, you're not supposed to be nice to them. That's you not know what right. I like me, I feel like that affected your self-esteem growing up. But you just talked about how stuff affected their self-esteem as if it was something that everybody else got to look out for. No, exactly. It it affects all of our (laughs) self-esteem, but I feel like you as a black man, it affected your self-esteem. Yeah, but you said it to me as if it's a bad thing, but said it to them as if it's something you're supposed to help them out with. Why is that? No, I didn't. Why are you getting defensive? I'm not getting defensive. I'm I'm saying we just... No, I just spoke... You're really speculating. Okay, guys, I didn't say that you were wrong. I I said... I didn't say you were wrong. I asked a simple question. Audience, did exactly. did my was my question not relevant or do we need to giggle through it and try to make it seem like it's something bad? We don't bad? even need to giggle. I just need the answer to my questions. And I just answered it. You got an audience of people who heard what I said. The they, I didn't say anything wrong. I'm saying you literally said that when it was coming to women that we're supposed to look out for them because they've been mistreated by the man and everybody else. You did. But I don't. I don't necessarily think we should be coddled for it, but I think we need to recognize how all of this has affected our self-esteem, men and women. It, huh? I could have sworn, by, I, could have sworn huh? I answered, huh? I dealt with that. And then oh. when I said something which was the same thing on the other side. Was it? Was it not? Was it? You can tell me if it wasn't because I'm the one who said it thinking it was, but if it wasn't, then you could tell me it wasn't. I how did that affect you as a child? Are we really not going to answer any of that? That's what I'm saying, I guys. It's just, just it now this, this, this type of attitude <laughs> that people <laughs> have is so me. weird. How and did I don't get this. As a child growing up, I thought I was asking you questions and I want to know how it affected you as a child. But when you were asking me questions, it was not, it was literally to go away from what I said. If you asked me a question and I asked you a question that had nothing to do with what I said, I just wanted to go to something else. Like if you, when you said, I, was, oh, I didn't tell you, oh, so those women were so, no, I just answered it. I didn't try to make them seem like they were less than because I think of you it. You could go into that as well if you'd like to, but I still want to know. That no, that but I'm saying I answered it. I literally I answered what you said. I didn't still try did. to belittle it. I just answered it. Uh, we can move on. That's fine. Now, when no, someone would ask, I would tell anyone. Everything you've gone through affects all of us. Me, it made me look at life differently. I said, as a dark-skinned man, my job is to, because as a man, we don't get to cry about what happens. So my job was, you know what? I'm watching what happens. Michael Jordan just got popular. Wesley Snipes just got popular. All of these people got popular. How'd they get popular? They went out and they hustled. And when they got something, they wanted them. So what did I do? I did the same thing. I went out and I said, I'm not going to cry about the situation. The world is what it is. When you're born in it, if you're a midget, you know it's a tall person's world. When you're poor, you know it's a rich person's world. If you're a fat woman, you know for a fact that you're probably not going to be prom queen. But what do you do at that point? If there's things you can change, if you're fat, you know you can go on a diet at least. 
if you're short, I feel bad for you because you can't change that. But there's other things you probably can do. Me, I couldn't change my dark skin. I'm a 42-year-old man, and I'm still called every day. Online, you can see it. They call a grown-ass man a 8-year-old's diss, crispy. But I deal with it. Why? Because it's life. And I don't go around like black women trying to say, other people must coddle me because of how they feel or because they don't like what they see. Or I don't go around saying, it's a white man's world, the white man doing this. I know for a fact, and mixed dudes can tell you, they'll get a lame looking white dude and treat him like they want a trophy. But if it's a black dude, he gotta have swag and gotta be thugged out and all this stuff. So the black dude gotta be like common, but when you get to a white dude, he can be that lame ass dude, that uh, the Reddit guy. That, that you, 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 you could be with two different, the white dude could be corny as fuck. But as long as he white, that's cool. You don't tell the white dude he sound white. You don't tell the white dude he don't have swag. You change for him. Like Eve. Eve was the pit bull in the skirt when she was dating, dating black dudes. As soon as she got a white man, she done covered up the fucking tats, told people how she getting surgeries to get rid of the tats, and is on talking television talking like this now. And she never did that for no black dude. But you don't see Lil Wayne going around being thugged out when he with a black chick. Get him a white chick. Now he, hi, I'm, I'm not Lil Wayne anymore. I'm Little Wayne. You don't see He's it. Mr. Carter. Huh? <laughs> He's Mr. Carter now. That's what I said. You don't see it. He's still the same old motherfucker with all that bullshit in his face. He's still the same weirdo. That's it. But him. really, I guess my question to you then is, do you feel like the way you were treated and the things you experienced as a child has affected what you're attracted to now as a grown man? No, I'm attracted to all women. Matter of fact, probably the, um, I'm like, more attracted all to all women. It doesn't matter. I'm actually more attracted to darker skinned women. Mm-hmm. Um, since I've been doing this and it's been almost 10 years now, um, people have only seen me with two white women and probably four for most of the women that I enjoy are darker skinned women. I just do. I think that they're beautiful. But far one of the funniest thing is I tell the story all the time. When I was in eighth grade, I fell in love with this little girl. I thought she was the most beautiful girl in the world. It was a dark skinned chick. Mm. And we went to a little house party and mm. they said, well, you could go inside the closet for the little seven minutes of heaven or what the fuck. Oh, Lord. So I was so happy to be going in there with her, although I didn't know what the fuck I was doing because I was nervous. I, I was like, I just want to be around her because she would talk to me in class. But I, w- I was never kind of, even now, I'm not the approach a woman kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of shy. So, <gasps> You're shy? So, so in the, so in the um, closet, I'm with her and I'm just so happy. And I heard them outside of the closet making jokes about how black we were. We couldn't see each other. If we have kids, uh, we'd have to put white gloves on them if they ever ate chocolate. I just, I I remember all these jokes now and I'm I'm extra grown. I remember every one of them. Do you know when I got out of that closet, every time she tried to speak to me in class, I never spoke to her again. And I loved this girl as a kid, but I loved this girl. And I would never speak to her again because of how they made- I feel like you just answered the question I asked you previously. I thought I answered the question you asked earlier. No, I thought I answered that question. No, we scar each other. The simple fact that as a child, you can remember this happening to you. But I've been saying that. Like, no, we scar each other. But that's why I I literally was saying that on my show last night. Audience, was that not what I was saying in my show last night? (laughs) Yes, because, well, if I'm going to talk to someone and I'm telling them something and they're going to act like I didn't say it. I have a bunch of people who've heard me say it for years. Act like you didn't say it, but like you are. You when I was telling you, I've said that asked, though, but you won't acknowledge it. The then question because I asked it and my tonality was completely different because I was asking it from a different place. You wanted to shoo it away, but you telling that story. No, I didn't. Back, I wanted you to answer my it. question first. That's how things are supposed to go. If you if you ask me a question and I even gave an example, this makes no sense. I gave an example that you asked a question and I gave an answer first. I'm not going to not hear your question or or ignore it. That that to me is respect. Okay. I wouldn't let my kid do it. If I ask you something, you answer it, and then we go to something. That's like proper etiquette protocol. Yes, UFK. It is because of the condescension is high, and I don't know why. But so what I'm going to do is just <laughs> let the questions be asked, 
and I'm just going to answer them because I don't know why people would have a discussion like that. I think that's a weird thing. If I want to know something, I'm going to have a real adult dialogue with the person. But so I'm going to just answer what you have because this is getting mm-hmm. weird. How is it getting? It's not getting weird. It's, it's getting We're weird because you're. We're just getting to a place where you're getting really personal. No, no, no. I'm not getting personal. There are people in the audience who are seeing it, ma'am. And it's like you, the typical okay. black woman says, "Fuck what everybody else just saw." I, I don't care if 19 people tell me my underarm stink. I, I don't think they do. I don't care if 19 people see I hit your car. I didn't, and that's weird. I'm not making this up. We have an audience of people who are saying this is getting weird because the person's not even acknowledging what's being said to them. Listen, so I'm just going to let you ask the question it. and then I'm going to answer it's it. cool. Let's let it go because whatever. Anyway, what's up with the, can I call it what I want to call it? Can I call it the maggot hat? <laughs> what's up with Make it? Make America great again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is this about? I need to know. Well, it's his campaign slogan. And if you are, it's just like if you were a Warriors fan, they have shirts called The City. And you wear The so, City shirt. Am I allowed to ask you, did you honestly vote for Trump? And if you did, did you vote for Obama previously? I voted for, um, I can go back. Yeah. I voted for, um, Bill Clinton was probably the first person I voted for. Mm-hmm. Is that my phone? Oh, yeah, they got people calling because I'm on the they, they think they're being cute. They're doing the whole that. Um, I voted for Bill Clinton because that was the first time I was able to vote. Mm-hmm. Then after that, I voted for Gore, but they cheated Gore with Bush. You're right. Then after the second time, I voted for Bush because I thought John Kerry was an idiot. Then after that... I voted for Barack Obama because I wanted to see a so-called black man win. I was like, and I sure didn't want an old motherfucker to win. I thought that nigga would die in office. And I surely didn't want that woman who was his vice president because that bitch says she can look out her window and see Alaska. She could see Russia from her house. Oh, Russia, yeah, from her house in Alaska. So I didn't want that bitch to win. So I And I was voting for, at that point, I don't want a person who's, who's weak. So all these people were stupid to me. So I voted for Why Bush that time. Why did you just say a so-called black man, though? Huh? Why did you say so-called black man? Because he's not black. He's mixed. He, he's he's biracial. He's not black. If you call him, if you call him black, then you can call him white. And the reason why you can't call him white, because white people won't allow you to call him white. So that's why mixed people love to call themselves black, because they're the four foot five person hanging around midgets. Mixed people so, should be called mid. They should be called. They should be called mixed. They should be called biracial. They should have their own thing. If I take yellow and blue, it's not. It's no longer called yellow or blue. It's called green, and everybody accepts it as green because they know it's not that anymore. It's common sense. You don't mix two things and all of a sudden still have one of the two things. It's a new thing. Mm. That's not even okay. an arguable thing. It actually is. The, the one drop rule was given to black people because white people looked at anything that looked kind of with anything else. They wanted to screw up black folks and it worked because white people don't have the, the argument that black folks have. We got the argument of, well, you got a skinny nose like white people. or You got good hair. The fact that you even use this term lets you know white people have done a great job of confusing a group of people by dropping their little blood in them and then pushing it on them. They did the same thing when they came into America. They raped the Indians and caused the mixed Indians to fight the regular Indians. They did it on purpose. If you look at colonization and anybody that's ever researched colonization, they know that what the two main principles of to colonize a people is to kill the men and destroy the lineage exactly but i have i have a question for you Mm -hmm. if you look at uh, the male being the dominant partner all right so let's say the male is the seed and the female is the earth right if you were to plant an apple seed in i don't know grounds where only oranges grow would an orange grow or would it still be an apple tree if the man is the seed and the woman is the earth, then you can't change what the seed is. So if the father is black, no matter what the woman is, is that, is that child still not black? Maybe you don't understand the difference between biology and seed planting. When you plant a seed in the soil, the soil nourishes it, but it doesn't mix it. And it doesn't change what it is. They, the hold seed, on. But it, when you mix a human 
Thank you. The people who know biology know this is a poor analogy. I guess if you're talking to an idiot, then yes, an idiot might not understand that. But a person who knows biology knows when you mix people, that's why they have, when you have your chromosomes, you get half of one and half of the other. But when you put an apple seed in the ground, you don't get half apple seed and half the dirt. (laughs) It's like, I get what you're trying to do, but if I say something that's 100% true, if I say something that's true, then please at least acknowledge it. What seed you plant? It's not it a seed. seed of the fruit that it came from is what I'm saying Ma'am, to you. But you're not, you're no not acknowledging that it is a half like, mixture. What, what you say? Dear, because you're not acknowledging. Dear, well. please go talk to a biologist instead of trying to argue with me because that's inappropriate at that point. That's like me arguing with somebody that's saying five plus five is ten. But I don't want to say it because it ruins my argument. I literally just oh, uh, said a fact. Talk to any geneticist, please. Don't sit and argue sure. with me. Talk to you're a geneticist. Right, sir. You're right. I'm going to let you have it. You're right. You got it. Like what? You got it. It's cool. So you can only be black if your mother's black and your father's black. Yes. Right. This man has a white mom and a black dad. He should acknowledge them both. Just like my daughter acknowledges that she doesn't tell people she's mine or her mother's. She said, I'm both of theirs. She literally does. She doesn't say I'm just his. It doesn't make sense to say I'm just his. I'm both of theirs. It took both of them to make me. If they took her DNA, it's literally half mine and half hers. So is your daughter mixed? Yes, with me and her mom. (laughs) What is her mother? Well, this is a nationality mix. Her mother is Guyanese. Her father's Panamanian. Okay. She's neither. She's she's neither. She's both. There you go. You're either neither and both at the same time. Same as a a biracial person. Because a biracial person is neither of theirs because they're not the same. Just like yellow and blue is not is is neither and both. Okay. It literally is green. So you're a green is neither and both. both. Guys, tell me if I'm lying. Yellow and blue, green, and yellow and blue both. makes green. Green is or neither or and both. Are both. <laughs> neither should be claimed, but both should be claimed. No, I just said it's other. neither <laughs> and both. It's neither of them because as it's mixed, it became its own, but it took both of them to make it. That's common sense. Like no matter how much l- laughing we do, I'm really 100% correct. Talk to I a geneticist. So. You're Just very talk to a geneticist, right all I'm asking. So intense. No, it's just weird that if I'm saying something is true and people are laughing at it, it's like, the truth no, is the truth. No, you are neither, but you are both. Okay. I get it. Okay. Sure. But I so spoke about, but I don't even understand. I thought the question was about the MAGA hat and best because I said so-called it is. black man. And then I asked you about who you But I'm saying because I said so-called, so-called black man, black we black then got into an black argument black about something that I, I was 1,000% correct the, about. I just needed to know why you said so-called black man. And that's how we got here. Yes, but when I explained it, so, then it was kept going down the rabbit hole. It wasn't, okay, that's actually 100% correct. Now let me get back to the MAGA hat. You're good. Let's get back to the mag, the maggot hat. Why do you wear that hat? Do you really believe in what Trump stands for, honestly? What Trump stands for is the equivalent of, I look at it like my mom or my brother, or even someone I'm dating. Let me explain. Do I stand for everything they stand for in my family? No, I do not. Mm-hmm. But I know that that's my family. Do I stand for everything that the person I'm dating stands for? No. But I know that's who I chose. In America, the we wanted the white people who did not stand for what Barack Obama stood for to acknowledge that he was their president. We thought it was disrespectful if they didn't. We thought it was disrespectful if they ran up on him and said something when he was trying to just do his job, whether they liked it or not. So if we treated him that way, why would we now turn around and say you can treat the current president like shit because you don't like him? It's the same thing. If you are to have respect for the office, then you have respect for the office. 
Wearing the MAGA hat is the equivalent of me being a San Francisco fan, and I don't like the, the way the coach is going right now, but I'm a San Francisco fan. He's the president, and we should back the president because if you got a pilot, no matter how much you racist and you don't like black folks, if you look in that cockpit and you see as a white, a black dude, you know what you better do? Hope he know what he's doing and cheer for his ass while he's on the flight because if he fuck up, we all dead. This is our president. If he fucks up, we're all dead. So I would rather talk to him in a respectful tone and I would rather treat him in a way in which I can try to get him to say, just like when I, yesterday I had people mad. The people who were Trump voters were mad because I was calling him out on his bullshit. And I said, but as a, as a, he worked cause they kept saying he's the boss. I said, no, he's not. He works for us and we need to treat him that way. If he's doing something that's out of line, we need to talk to him and tell him to do the right thing. And if he keeps doing it out of line, we need to get him out of office. Anybody who's in office, we need to understand they work for us. And until we start treating them like they work for us, we're going to keep sitting here arguing over crap. So if he works for me and I know it, then I have no problem wearing this hat. Just like when I buy stock in, Al uh, in Apple, I have no problem wearing an Apple hat. I have stock in America and he is the CEO of America. I voted for him. So I have no problem because I damn sure wasn't going to vote for Hillary Clinton who sit up there and said black men are, uh, what did she, what was the word she said, guys? Black men were, uh, uh, young black teenagers are super predators. I'm damn sure not going to vote for Hillary Clinton when I know that under her husband, Bill Clinton, was the largest incarceration of black men in history. In history. But black folks still are OK with that guy because he just put black men in jail. So it's OK because we don't give a crap about black men. I don't think any of it is OK, but I think Trump is particularly polarizing, especially when it comes to minorities. Now, there might be a lot of things that you agree with him as far as his policies go. But he, I think <laughs> this man is openly racist, like is is that the thing like you what what, what do you mean openly racist please explain with? this to me you just made a statement guys no, 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 if i no, if, if somebody called me something i would like them to be able to then mm -hmm. have someone who pretends that they're not no 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 on. no no you said openly racist please tell me what because you don't know him unless you know something i don't know that's why i'm asking i don't know him personally but just the things that he has said i.e like, first of all how are you going to First, look, can we just talk about how he talks about immigrants, especially Hispanic immigrants? Hold on. So being talking about immigrants make you racist. Go ahead. Explain that. He called Mexicans criminals. Like, is that that's OK? How is that different from Hillary calling black men criminals? OK, like, you just so said, hold on. You just wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just said I'm, 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 I'm curious. You just said that black folks don't know the difference between a race and a nationality. And then you just turned back around and said, he called Mexicans criminals. So he That's racist. You said that black people don't know. The and difference. you said you agree. We both said it. Would you like me to play it back? Because we both how, said it. But how is that a difference? Honestly. Because, you refer, because like, okay. a Mexican there's, isn't a race by what you said. Because there can be black Mexicans, white Mexicans, Asian yeah, Mexicans. It's not but a race. An, there's intention behind people's words. And I think a lot of times what we don't do is we don't look at the intentions behind people's words. Instead, we want to dissect it and make it politically correct. But like, that's what you, you're doing. You, can, you No, but listen, you can tell the intentions behind someone's words. Can you not? Honestly, if someone's trying to be a dickhead to you, but they present it in such a way where yet when I kept oh, yet when me and the audience kept telling you yet when me and the audience kept saying that you're being condescending and rude, you said no, you're not. So First since you all, so I apparently we're not good. But ma'am, but my point is, and you should get this right now. Apparently we're not good at telling people's intentions because you're telling us we're wrong, dear. So maybe you're, you're wrong about him me. too. I even see what they're saying. I know, I'm but I'm telling you what they're saying, and when you go back, you can read it. I wouldn't just make it up. But when I was telling you how I felt, you just told me, first off, we can tell. We know how people treat. So when I said it to you, you didn't give me that same credit, did you? You didn't so say you, I can would tell. Would like for me to rewind and give you that same credit then? No, the point is, why would you then turn around and try to use that logic on someone else when you said it didn't work on you? You All have right. had several times people thought you were stuck up and you weren't. You didn't do anything to them. This 
Did I lie? Are you trying to have an understanding or do you just want to have a debate where in which you always get your point across? Did you just really say that towards something I made a real point? Because you used it I, to. I did, actually. Yeah. Y'all. Yeah. If I make a point, it doesn't matter because we can just be condescending and we can be smart about it. It doesn't so matter. now I'm being I condescending it. again. Because I made an actual point and you just ignored it. I said to you, have there have been plenty been of. Have you not been condescending to Let me, me try though? it again. I Penny people have told you and other people that they thought you meant something that you didn't. That was either a yes or no question. So you do can you say think no. his intentions then? His intentions Apparently are I sure. don't. That's what was the point. And there's several people who don't. Because if a man is saying, it's just like me in my house, I won't let anybody in my house. And the same rules that Barack um that um that Donald Trump has about immigration, Barack Obama had them. He just didn't say it out loud. It's the same thing about uh, George Bush and the Patriot Act. Everybody thought the Patriot Act was fucked up, which it was. Mm -hmm. And then Barack Obama passed this thing called the NDAA, which was worse than the Patriot Act. But because a black man did it, we okay with it. That's wrong. How are you going to let somebody pass something that surpasses the Patriot Act? That holds Americans criminals. Do you not understand that everything Donald Trump said out in the open is exactly what uh, Barack Obama said about the same people? But that's what I just asked you. I said, is it because he says what he means? No, but up front, no, instead of hiding it, makes you more comfortable. No, he's no. It's because the thing is, if you have a country, every other country on the planet stops other people from coming to theirs. They will kill you in some planets if you just uh, in some nations if you come in there. Yet for some reason, America's supposed to have open borders when we know from what the Cubans did, the Cuban wave, what Cuba did. And it was one of the most fucked up things that Castro did. He put uh, he put um, about 40 percent of his worst criminals and sent them to America. The majority of these people are not going to send their best people. That's what Donald Trump was saying. Their best people aren't coming. They're going to try, you, if you owned a country, wouldn't you try to keep your best scientists, your best doctors, your best lawyers? So Absolutely. who would you send out of your country, though? People I don't need. <laughs> that's what they were doing, and that's what he was saying. And if you look at it, that's literally what's been happening, that they're sending straight-up criminals. But I, think that, but I think the narrative is not just that. It's like you can't look at everyone and say, oh, you're a criminal. There are people who honestly just want a better life. Yes, but how do you discern between them without closing the border and making a proper path to citizenship? And if you listen to what Donald Trump says, he doesn't care who comes like he said. You just got to come the right way. Like my parents came. Everybody, I had so many Mexicans who sit there and say, my parents came the right way. Why can't everyone else do it that way? Or what about you if you worked your ass off and you got your education and now you have a good job? You're the same woman who'd look at other black people and say, hey, I did it. You can, too. Do it the right way. Why would you think that because you black, you should bypass doing it the right way and go steal? That's all. We have a rule I, of law. Why not? He didn't change the laws. Name a law Donald Trump changed. He hasn't changed one. He's just I'm enforcing it. I'm not all saying that, but I'm also saying that you cannot just say everyone. No one said that. Group everyone. In this one category, say, oh, they're all criminals. Everyone who's trying to, you know what I'm saying? Cross Anyone the who's is, not trying to come in legally is actually a criminal. They're breaking your national law. I don't understand the, the, the misunderstanding there. All he's saying is he's not kicking you out if you came in legally. He's kicking you out if you didn't. You got, a me you got a Mexican guy in there right now who just said there are many of them who are coming over here having a baby just so they won't have to go home. It is a Mexican who just said this. As a black person, just like you as a woman or a black woman, you know there's nothing wrong with saying, like if you see the Me Too movement, you can call out the crap and say, yeah, I'm a woman, but that's bullshit. We got people all over the world who say, yeah, I don't like a lot of shit that Donald Trump says, but I'm not going to call the man racist because what he just said about this is actually a fact. I can't call him racist because the one thing I noticed, one uh, 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 person that I'm, I really, really love, his name is Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker talks about all the money he made with uh, Donald Trump. And he's a dark-skinned man, and you don't see him on TV, and he didn't go around saying how much money he made with Donald Trump. He said that the family he took care of, because Herschel Walker used to be in the NFL, and he was one of the greatest college running backs in history. Herschel Walker said that he takes care of several of his family members. They lived off of him and his NFL money. He said 
They had no problem when he was working with Trump and bringing that money home. All of a sudden, those same people got mad that he was continuing to work with Donald Trump when Donald Trump was running for presidency and his family members tried to act like they wouldn't speak to him. And he said he spent years taking care of those same people. He said that makes no sense. Think about all the rappers who had no problem rapping about Donald Trump and talking about how great Donald Trump was. But now he's a president. He racist. Well, why wasn't the fuck he racist when you was rapping about him? There's an actual song. I didn't even know it by um, the, the young lady, the, the young dude. I'm friends with his mom. Uh, and the dude is named Ray Schrammert or something like that. But I'm, I'm friends with his mom. And she sent me a message saying, you know, my son got a song about Donald Trump. He put it back out. He put it back out. Uh, he put it back out in, 19, in 2014. I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, it makes no sense that all these people are now claiming they hate the man when everybody loved the man before he ran for president. If he was so racist now, he's racist then. Huh? You think we're all just hypocrites then? I think the majority of people are hypocrites. It's very difficult to stay like right now. I'm the main person who said, well, I, sh I showed everybody who I voted for. I, when I went to the voting booth, because I'm telling people to go vote. So I went to vote. And when I went mm -hmm. to vote, I went and I filmed the entire thing. And any one of the Republicans who said something stupid, I went off on them. Meaning I didn't vote straight Republican. I would never vote straight Democrat. I don't think you should be allowed to do that. I think you should know every candidate before you vote for them, which would allow us to be a more informed public. The majority of people don't even know who their tax commissioner is. They don't know who their mayor is. They don't know who their senator is. All they do is wait on the damn presidential election, the last line of defense. The which is not the most important election, just to be clear. That's what I said. It's the last line of defense. It's <laughs> yeah. when you, By the time the president does or says anything and, and enacts something, it's too late when it comes to you. Absolutely. But that motherfucker who your governor, oh, he's affecting your life right then. But You're don't you think that people are comfortable with how they categorize people in their heads? So in other words, Donald that's why I'm trying to shake that up. Comfortable character for us to look at on television as you know what I'm saying? Investing in real estate. That's comfortable. Him running the country. Uh, maybe not so comfortable. But here's the thing. None of these people run in the country. If you look at these presidents, no matter who they are, the last group of people they give a shit about is black people. If you want to be offended by something, look at what Barack Obama did. He came out and said, I'm not the black president. I'm the American president. But then what did he do with gays? He gave them all kind of damn policies and past shit and even turned the White House the rainbow color for a night to show them that he had solidarity with them. And while he did it, do you know black male unemployment reached an all time high? I don't even think we can bring homosexuals into this because they're of every color. So it's like, no, wow. I'm, no I understand what you're saying. But that's what I mean, like if, if I'm making a point, it's like you're saying, well, let's just talk about something else now. Because I'm what? making a point saying that this president who is a, who is there, and if you say this one president is not having our best interest, with well, this other one not only didn't have our best interest, he oversaw the largest amount of unemployment in the history of America of black men since Jim Crow. Look it up. Black men couldn't get a... But do you really think that that stemmed from Obama and not the administration before? If you won't blame Barack Obama for the stuff, I'm going to give you that. Then I'm leave. not even okay. saying that I no, won't, but I'm honestly asking you. My point is, if you're not, if you're going to ask that question, then do the same thing about Donald Trump. Just be fair. I, I will, but I'm so saying, Donald okay, Trump's so only been in office two. Donald Trump's back. been in office less than two years, but we can't blame Barack Obama for the eight years. But we're going to go off on Donald Trump when we won't even let him do his job. He got voted to do the job. What do you mean we let him won't do his let job. him do his job? We're not stopping him from doing his job. So then, why won't we just sit back and judge him when he's done? Then because he won't stay off of Twitter. I don't know. Like <laughs> what? The what that has nothing to do with his job, but that has nothing to do with his job. You are the president of the free world. Right? But it still I has nothing to do with his do. job. And it could what be a guy. Stopping? Wait a minute. Bill Clinton got his dick sucked in the office, but people still love him. That's Bill. That's not like, OK. OK. Do, honestly, do I agree with that? Hell no. But to be honest with you, I was too young at the time. Do you understand? I'm just making an analogy saying if this man I did. I do. I understand. Because every time I make analogies, like it, it, it gets missed. I'm just saying this man did things we didn't like, but he did the job. So if this dude's on Twitter, I get that you don't like it. But we didn't vote for him to be the best Twitter candidate ever. We didn't vote we for him. We did not vote for him to be a 
to be a public figure that is not no what you right voted what what, did, what do you we, vote your president to do for him to be the uber celebrity to but what do you on, vote your president on, to do TV can you tell me like, what you vote your president to do he could be doing like he just, but can he you tell me who, what you vote your president to do finesse to even fucking verbalize anything intelligible it is ridiculous He's an embarrassment. Like, do your job, yes, but can you do it quietly? And can you stay off of Twitter? And can you stop insulting celebrities for no fucking reason? Can you actually take care of the world? Like, what the fuck are you doing? What is he doing? What is he doing right now for you? What is the, What has Donald Trump done for you in this last two years since you voted for him? Black male unemployment under Barack Obama was the highest it's been since Jim Crow. Under okay. Donald Trump, it's the lowest it's been. Okay. And that's what he's done for you personally? I'm a black man, so yes. There was a um there was a post and I think. What has it he was done against you? you? How about that? Since that's the question there, you asked and I answered it. How about you yeah. tell me the vitriol of this man? I mean, did it hurt your feelings when you were little? I mean that that would be condescending and stupid to say. Like, I'm just why, trying to make a point. Why are you still? Are you, you're still upset about that? No, right I'm there? saying. What, uh, I, no, I'm not upset about. What I'm upset about is the idea that if we're going to have a con conversation, when I answer yours, wouldn't it apply the other way around? You ask me what. So, has but he's what done. do you want me to say? No, I'm saying you said what has he done, and I answered it eloquently. And now I, I asked okay, you what has he I done against you? Hold on. So now I asked you in counter, what did okay. he do what? against you? Because you asked me personally. So what has he done against you personally? He has done nothing against me personally. Hmm. Besides the fact that I'm a woman. Anyway, um, <laughs> there was a post, and I think you were in your, um, your MAGA hat, and there was a comment, and you said something to the effects of like, well, basically like, I'm rich. Like, you said something to someone, and, and the context of that whole thing was like, well, I'm rich, so... Because he said, oh, well, I will explain it. You cover that? Yes, because he said, yeah. Donald Trump only helps the rich. Yeah. That's like, me, like, saying, well, that's like me saying the president only helps the women, and it's a woman I'm talking to. She'd say, yeah. well, yes, so that's why I like him. That is stupid. It's a dumb thing. Okay. Common sense. Poor people like people who help the poor, don't they? Wow. <laughs> I don't get it. That's literally well, common sense. People who like steak go to steakhouses. Why would we try to force a vegetarian there? Okay, so the fact that you say he helps, well, he, the, the commenter said, you know, he only helps the rich. And you're like, well, I'm rich. Like, fuck it, basically. Because he said, so, what has he, the person said, what has he done for you? He only helps right. the rich. My response would be 100% accurate, wouldn't it? If I said, what has the person done for you? He only helped the light skinned people. And you're like, have you not looked at my face? Has he not raised taxes for the wealthy? No, he didn't raise them on me. I don't know what you're talking about. He didn't about. raise them on you? If you have a CPA, ma'am, and you know what you're doing when you run your own business, that shit doesn't apply to you. Okay. That's what the world is about. Just like if you a light skinned dude, that a lot of shit don't apply to you. Just like if you a seven foot dude, a lot of shit doesn't apply to you. You can't make people understand you. And do you understand you didn't raise the taxes? We got tax cuts. That's why people are upset. Because there were actually cuts, not raises. Well, only on a certain percentage of people there were yep. tax cuts. Mm -hmm. Only people know. in a certain tax bracket. Mm -hmm. That's why I say. Mm -hmm. So... If you're in a certain tax bracket, mm -hmm. would you not be upset because he actually raised taxes? Just like you said when you were talking earlier about how pretty you are and you don't get upset about the advantages you get for being that. And you didn't even work to do that. You were just born that way. But the people who got rich, a lot of them were actually worked for it. I grew up poor. So if I worked for it, why would I then turn around and say, I ah, don't want to take advantage of it? How is that, how is that a feasible analogy? <laughs> Well, because I was saying earlier, you weren't, you're not going to turn down the perks you get for looking the way you look. And you didn't even work to do it. You were born that way. That's genetics. Honestly, can I, can I just say this? I work for everything that I have. And if anyone assumes that I like get something extra off my looks, I don't. 
I was merely speaking out of a place of so confidence. Now we're just being disingenuous. When you were women, me women, assume, let, women, please tell me if you agree or disagree with what she just said. That a pretty that woman, assume. that a pretty woman gets no different, gets treated no different than anyone else. Please okay. tell me if that's true or not. Cause she just said that, that wasn't what I was saying though, because there's a lot of things that I could do based off my looks, but there's a lot that I would have to give up because of that, which I turn down because I'm not that person. So I think you need to think about what you're saying right now. No, what I said is what I, I said, said, you don't turn down the perks of it. Meaning if you get more guys in your inbox trying to holler at you than the other girl, you're not going to say, let's split it girl. You don't, you accept what you get. Every the athlete accepts what he gets. That guy doesn't turn around and say, "I'm not going to accept this hundred million dollar contract." Are you here? That's what I'm trying to tell you right now. Is I don't accept everything that I. Get. I didn't say I everything. everything oh, that comes to me. So I didn't say anything. everything. Just like the hundred million dollar athlete doesn't accept every contract sent it. Then why would you even say that yeah, as an that. argument? Sure. My point sure. was, you have things that somebody else doesn't, and as a person who has it, you don't worry about what they don't have. You just do what you do, and you have more choices than the fat chick on prom. You don't turn around and tell her, I'm going to give you half the guys who try to talk to me. You just pick the one you want to go with. You understand you have more choices than her. It's but that's life. That's the thing that you realize that everyone doesn't think that way. Like, I honestly don't walk. No, but I, seriously. Says the person who came around. out talking about how beautiful they were when not prompted. But go ahead, though. Oh, okay. No, you're good. You got it. Since you got all the fucking answers. I just all repeated I what you said, that man. That's not how I, I just repeated what that's you not said. That's how I fucking view life. I just repeated what you said. Now I got all the fucking answers. So now people get mad. Oh, oh did I hurt a nerve or something like that? What is it? That's a sarcastic response now. I, I mean, literally repeated I what you said, and now you so told me I got all the fucking okay. answers because I repeated what she said. Hey, guys, have, would you ever see me have someone oh, repeat my words, and, and then I get so mad at them for repeating my words? My I words cuss at them for repeating I, my words. I didn't mischaracterize her words. I literally just spoke them back, and she cussed at me for saying them back. That's all I did. Oh, I cussed at you. I'm sorry. Is you is you big mad? <laughs> Are you mad, man? Ma'am, <laughs> I've I've enjoyed the conversation, but one thing I will not do is sit here and have people do that. I got to where I am because I do try to be professional. And once mm -hmm. you start telling me am I big mad, I get it. I enjoyed that you had. I hope that you had fun. But when I bring people on, I do try to have a real conversation because there's a bunch of people watching. And I was trying to have a real conversation. No, you're not, because you keep on being sarcastic, Literally, and there's no reason for it. If you had a problem with the way the president acts, then maybe you wouldn't act the same way, especially when I invited you here and I've allowed you to speak your mind. You literally cussed at me for repeating your words, then tried to tell me, is you big mad? Like, we 12. I, you, Instead of you saying, I apologize, well, sir, for cussing at you for no reason, because you haven't done it to me. Words at all. I, I repeated your words, what you said. I'm not the one who brought that up okay. at the beginning. You did. You talked about how you was, you was beautiful and you know it. That was you. That has to do with my own self-esteem and my confidence. That my only point, by, dear, you didn't have to cuss it. at me at all. I didn't deserve it. And you damn sure didn't have to, after the response, tell me, is you big mad at me telling you, why would you talk to me like this on my own shit? Who does that? I wouldn't come in your house and disrespect your house and then say, is you big now, mad? Now I have disrespected you. After you have used my words against me, which you say that I said when I told you I didn't say that. And then when I tried to explain to you, you what didn't I tell, said, You didn't try to explain it. You literally okay. just cussed at me. The audience saw it. All I okay. said was, says the person who said this earlier. That's all I said. And then your response was to cuss. You did not at any point try to say, well, let me explain. Because I've never cut you off from saying, let me explain. You literally just cussed at me, and I was like, what? what I and then when I stopped and said, why did you say that? You said, is your big mad? That was your response. And even hearing it, you, you still won't say, okay, that was kind of childish. Nope. Every single time I ask you a question that hits a nerve. How did you that have been getting it? tense. You have, honestly. I, apparently, you haven't been watching me then like you say you have. Because my conversations are like okay. this. Okay. My conversations, okay. if I'm having a passionate argument or discussion, there is passion. And for someone to try and belittle it when they got their passion up, they are not being belittled. 
because you've done it too. Look, you've been just as passionate in this. Belittling you. You've been just as passionate as me in this discussion, and ain't nobody belittled your response. Is your big mad? Nobody did that you to you. You have belittled my responses. No, I. Your response of being passionate, I haven't belittled your passion. If I belittle something, it's because you're wrong. Like when you tried to say it's the same as dropping a seed in the ground. It actually How isn't. How can you say that an opinion is wrong? Now you're just... If my, opinion that, if my opinion that 5 plus 5 is 11, you mean to tell me you can't tell me if it's wrong? Seriously? If my opinion is that opinion America has only been around for the last 30 years, you can't tell me that's wrong because that's my opinion. Right now? Huh? Are you serious right now? Yes, I told you to, and then okay, I had to stop it. We're not talking about facts. We're the talking fact about our opinions about different situations and That scenarios. was not an opinion what I told you, and I had to tell you to go get a geneticist. They will agree in with my, me. And no, you told me to get a biologist, and my analysis I said either of that one. whole thing was to get your understanding of why you considered him a so-called black man. That was it. If that was it, then we would have moved on, as I said earlier. As soon as but I explained it, we would have moved on. That, no, we didn't. We moved like... Three points on from oh that. Oh my goodness. Y'all, y'all didn't see any of what happened. In her mind, that's what happened, and that's what happened. Nothing else. The fact that I got a bunch of people and the person won't even, you know what's sad? The person could stop right now and just go look and see all these other people saying, ma'am, this is what you said. But they won't. They would just rather sit here and pretend to me that they didn't say it. And I can't believe that. That would be like me calling her a bitch, and then she's saying, You just called me a bitch. And I said, no, I didn't. And then all these people are saying, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. No, I didn't. Instead of saying, if I said that, I really apologize because I'm not trying to call you a bitch and I slipped out and said it. We're literally having a bunch of people saying, dude, for as pretty as she is, he's right. They're, they're having to say that. And it's sad that y'all having to say that. She's beautiful, but he's right. I'm not trying to sit here. And, and, it's, and it's the passive aggressive like the person just wrote. That whole, I'm doing something that's irritating you, then I'm going to giggle in the process of doing it and then say, is you mad? Like, like, we're grown. We're not 15. And I'm trying to have a discussion and literally let you and anyone else find out about me or have a discussion about Republican, Democrat, all this stuff. And I've been just kicking nothing but facts about Hillary Clinton, about Bill Clinton. I haven't been giving my opinion. I've been just giving you facts and then telling you that's why How, I feel this can way. Can I ask you this? How are we supposed to be finding out about you when you're not giving your opinion? Like, because, what do you honestly even believe then? Like, wait, wait if all you want to do is sit here and just give facts when I'm asking you questions about you, how are we supposed to get to know you at all? Okay. If I ask you what's your favorite food, you're trying to get to know me. Or I'm trying to get to know you. Right, but I'm asking you what is the thought process for you behind a certain action and you're just giving me facts i still don't know you so if i'm asking you what, that would what be wait 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 process? hold on listen to what you just said and if, when i was given the analogy you didn't want it and then you're going to keep talking around it when anybody knows what i'm saying is common sense i would give you a fact about me in order for you to get to know me so you asked me why did i vote for a guy i told you he was our president you said but yeah then you got into specifics once you get into specifics, I get into facts because you're asking me a specific. You literally are saying, what has he done for you? What should I do? Give you an opinion or give a fact? What you're saying makes no sense. The fact should be about you then. Like and it that. was. Right? I literally so did. And I, I can repeat it. So then when I asked you about the tax bracket situation. I gave another fact. I said he gave tax cuts for the rich. If I'm rich, why would I then be mad at him for doing it? That is a fact. And then exactly. I gave an analogy and said, if you as a woman no. are getting perks for being a woman, it's very difficult for you to be mad that you're getting them. Especially if you worked for it. I work for where I am. So I'm going to be, just like how you proudly said, everything I have, I work for. People who work for shit are proud of it. I work for what I have. I'm proud of it. And I don't want anybody taking it away from me. And I damn sure don't want a president that's going to get into office and say, I know you work for all of that stuff, but we're going to take half of it and give it to these people so they can have some. I don't like that idea. I agree with you. Whatever you work for, you want to keep. But when I said that that's not how I think, at the same time, I know that there are people who can't do what I do, who don't think how I think. And do I want to help them? I do. I want to help them. Why is that bad? Oh, I didn't. But that's like. 
women like to add things that weren't said. I never said it was bad that you choose you to do it. Well, on your, no, I'm not adding it. I'm asking. A no, question. I'm saying, but, why, but you're though? asking something that was never even alluded to. I'm asking it now. No, listen, I said, you're asking something that wasn't alluded to, meaning the part about it being bad. I never said it wasn't bad. If, it was if, insinuated and you never let me finish because I was trying to say that's not how I look at life. When I was trying to say that my looks don't don't, you know, get me anywhere because I don't take anything based off of, oh, this is how I look and this is what this person is offering me. So if, the fact that I've worked for everything that I have and I'm saying I don't mind me personally helping someone else out. Show me how where it was insinuated by me. That's show, the statement that I didn't get to finish. So I'm asking you, show me where it was insinuated by me that helping somebody out with what you got is bad. It wasn't. That was the statement I didn't get to finish. Man, it wasn't. Your words out of your mouth just a second ago were, it was <sighs> insinuated that it was bad by you. You just You said don't it. want anyone to take it away from you, but why does it have to be taken away from you if it's to help someone else? Does that make sense at least? Okay. What doesn't make sense is you said something. I repeated it. You said you didn't say it. I then said, yes, you did. Then you went to something else okay. after, after denying you I'm said it. You said that you don't want what you've worked hard for taken away from you, right? Yes. Right. You don't want it taken from you. Would you give it to someone? Are you opposed to giving to other people? No, but it should be my own volition. No one should force me to do it. I should, it should not be a part of the narrative that I have to do it, that I have to bring this person with me. No, I don't because I made it myself. I work for it myself. I give opportunities to who I want to. It's just like a fine woman. She fucks who she wants to. She don't fuck everybody to make them all feel good. She says, you but know what? How much, huh? how much does it take from you to help someone else though? Honestly, would it take that much from you? What kind of question is that? That is really the vaguest question I've ever heard. Listen to what you just said. Say it back to yeah, yourself. How much would it take from you to give to someone else? Like, what does do, that do mean? Do you feel like you're being like, okay, if you had voted for a Democrat, do you honestly feel like you would have been? Forced? I have voted for a Democrat. I, okay, I told you I have. I'm voted. talking about this this past election. No, not, not a Democrat, Hillary. Not a Democrat, Hillary. Okay, if you had voted for Hillary in this last election, and I just told you, you why like I wouldn't. Would have do you feel like she would have taken something from you? I just told you why I wouldn't. I didn't vote for Hillary. It had nothing to do with my money at that point. It had something to do with I'm talking to a woman who says that people who look like me are super predators, who was married and under a man who put the largest incarceration of people who look like me. So when you talk about the idea of me looking out for other people, that's actually what I did. I looked out for other people unlike myself who may not have made it like myself who would have to go through exactly what her husband put people through getting locked up and never given another chance so that's why i didn't vote for her it had nothing to do with money it had something to do with self-protection you got black folks right now living in these inner cities who hillary is telling we want to stop you from owning guns the last group of people who should be cool with not owning guns is black folks because we know what happens when we don't have guns we should be the main people saying you ain't taking our guns because we know what happens every time we're unarmed. You come in our neighborhoods, you rape our women, you, you, you kill our men, and we can't do a damn thing about it because you're the only ones with guns. And why do you think everywhere in these inner cities, they make it to where you can't have guns? And every one of these inner cities are liberal. Yeah, most inner cities are. So I'm against that. So when you talk about somebody helping someone, I put myself in the front line knowing that I may not be understood when I first do it. Just like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and Jesus Christ and anybody else. When you got a belief, sometimes they ain't going to believe you when you do it. <clears throat> sometimes you're going to die and 50 years they're going to say, we missed that person. They were so good. But when you had them there, all you did was fuck with them when they were fighting for you. So again, when you ask me, is it, what does it take from me? Which is a, a still a nebulous question. What does it take from me? If I give somebody $5, it took $5 from me. If I give somebody $1,000, it takes 1,000 from me. If I give somebody five minutes of my time, it took five minutes off of my life. The answer answers itself. Or the question answers itself. Do I help people? I do a lot. 
You go around, look online, you'll see how many black women who are starting to do YouTube channels. Um, I bought them computers. I bought them there. I made that. I set their whole shit up and it's not one. It's several black women that I hire right now to work under me. Then help some of them go through college. Then help them pay their bills, all kinds of stuff. Me, the one who's so-called so bad for black women. So all the people who approach me and try to tell me what I say is wrong. You know what? None of them can say they've done anywhere close what I've done for that same group of people that they think I talk bad about. Go on, look on the internet and see how many people I've set them up on their YouTube channels that I've bought them 500 to a thousand dollars set up computers alone. Not the mic, a woman who just came on my show the other day. Um, not the other day, but uh, what is her name, guys? She she made a video, shouted me out. Um, damn it, I can't remember her name now. <sighs> That'll remind you. Yeah, uh, y'all y'all write the girl's name. Y'all know y'all like her. Y'all think she's pretty. She got the big big breasts. Um, why can't I? Irene, thank you, Irene. Irene had a problem with me, and I had a problem with her. We sat down <laughs> and we talked, and as we spoke, she was like. I get you now. I get it. I didn't get it at first, but I understand. Irene is a YouTuber. I bought Irene, um, uh, what do you call those, Mike? A Yeti mic and a $120 um, uh, webcam. So the Yeti mic was $350. The camera was $120. To a person I don't know, just because I said, I want you to get your game up. Then I spent like, oh, what was it like? Probably like two hours showing her how to, do the live she didn't know how to do it and she disagreed with me right now in the comment section somebody just wrote crispy fuck you talking about all that kind of shit and that's what the, that's what they write and i, I still, can't see it like that's mean why would um, you say that well i i sent you the link you can't pull you, you can't pull it up on your phone like it's on my it's on my screen but the comments are blurry oh well, no, well i try to let that people not see it but my point is, you'll be able to see it when you come back you got women in there saying right now he helped me he helped me I mean, no, that's good and all. I can't say that I agree with everything that you're saying, but I feel like I understand the place where it comes from. But can we go to like another topic? Because we were just just now talking about women. I have go, go one ahead. more question. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, I know that, that there's a lot of comments. I'm tr- I can try to slow the chat down, but if different people are talking, I it's can't a- slow it down. I, I can't slow it down if a bunch of people are talking. I can try, but the only the slowing the chat down only stops Wait. one person from talking a lot. Let it doesn't stop it. everybody. I, it. I wanted to know, do you, <laughs> this is a silly question, though. Mm-hmm. Do you have an issue with black women and their hair? Specifically, weaves and wigs. Yes, because would you like to know why? Why? Because I think it, when you were talking about earlier, how things hurt you and self-esteem. One of the largest source of self-esteem issues black women have is their hair. And it usually comes from their mothers telling them when they grow up, with your nappy ass hair, combing their hair, I can't wait till you get a perm and talking shit to them. So they hate Mm -hmm. their hair. So Mm -hmm. now it's gotten to the point where the only people who can wear their their hair on TV is mixed chicks. So mixed chicks love to put their little curls around and throwing around black chicks. And then black chicks get mad at them and try to fight them when they're eight years old. Because they watch their mother sit up there and tell them, oh, baby, you got good hair. Not like my daughter. So now you got this little girl with this fucked up thought in her head that she's bad naturally. And that this other person is good. So that's why light-skinned girls end up getting beat up. It ain't because of anything they did. It's because of the way the adults are showing a separation between the mixed children and the black ones. They show it openly. Even now, when you watch a commercial, notice how many of the little kids got little curly mixed hair. And that's all they are walking around. They don't show no motherfucking kids look like me. And when they do, it's always a badass kid that's doing something wrong. Or a fat ass dark skinned girl that's being so enough. And then they do it. And now these black girls are growing up and watching their mothers with a head full of long spiral curls. While they got two plaits on the side and two in the back. Do you think that little girl grow up loving herself when she sees that she go to school in the, with some white kids when they see their mama loving the white girl's hair and the mixed girl's hair and talking shit about theirs? So what I would like to do is see black women be natural in every state, whether this 4C, 3C, 2C, 1C, whatever the fucking C's are, that we can respect each one of them. 
that if we claim that black people are all black, from Barack Obama to me, we all black, then why don't we treat them all like they matter, like what they bring to the table is good. So it's strange that a person who likes to see black women naturally is being called a coon. That's weird. My problem with Weave is you're sending $10 billion a year to a bunch of damn Asians, to a bunch of people who ain't spending it with you. They ain't spending it back. How many of them, do you understand how many people that black women have sent to college, how many people's children who aren't black that they've sent to college, that they've secured their kids and grandkids' future off of black women's insecurity? That's scary. When they could take that money and put it into their own children. Somebody else's kids is going to private school while your kid is going to public school. Understandable. But my only thing is how much um, of our self-expression do we take out when we say, oh, I'm just going to be natural? Because honestly, like I said, my hair is natural right now, right? This is my hair. But at the same time, I will wear a wig just every now and again because I don't want to straighten my hair. It's like how much of our self-expression do we have to take out because we we want to be viewed as, you know, pro-black? I'm not and saying pro black. Be- I'm not saying pro black. Why well, was like, like my argument literally just got skewed right then? I said no, you no, are no. putting. I'm not to listen to what I said. Just, so maybe you'll woman. hear it if I say it a second time. You're ruining the self esteem of a child. It's a kid. It's your kid, <laughs> and if you can make that kid love how it was born, then why not do it? I don't even see the I, argument here. I agree here. with you, but I'm also saying to you how much. Okay, okay. I have an example, right? I have always wanted to dye my hair another color, but I don't want to damage my hair. So am I am I teaching self-hate to a younger girl because I want to wear a wig for the next week? That's another color different from my hair. When ma'am, I rock my ma'am, hair ma'am if you believe what you if you believe what you're saying, then if it's that easy and that one off, then don't sit and try to do what you did at the beginning, which talk about how. Uh, the white people are pushing their standard of beauty on us. No, that's just but one it's, person. It's a, it's a legit question, though, because even now these white women are wearing wigs and weaves. <laughs> they have braids and cornrows. They but can I'm braid their own hair. Like, they can cornrow their own hair. We... They can braid their own hair. They can cornrow their own hair. Can I'm they not? still saying they still have extensions and they still... They have Listen, extensions I go on that Facebook like and I see hair. all these wig ads. They have like, extensions that look... Down. Ma'am. You get breast, ma'am. If you get breast implants and I get breast implants, we both get breast implants. You get them and I get them. Who will they look at that looks weird when they walk out? You or me? Definitely the man. Why am I? Why is what I'm saying insane? You don't put dog hair on a cat. Saying it's insane. I'm just asking you. At what point is it extreme? How about at the point where you're getting ten? Let's try when I started again. When you're sending ten billion dollars to another group of people who won't spend a dime with you. Is that not fair? I thought that was a pretty good reason, but maybe it wasn't. <laughs> so, $10 billion to another group of people who wouldn't so, spend a dime with you. $10 billion so dollars that you could be spending on your children. Dollars, but it doesn't matter. So long as you can switch it up every day, that's fine. So, ma'am, I don't I'm care what people do. I'm not even talking about every day. I'm just saying. So every like other day. I don't, I don't care what people while. do. That Just like they like, don't I'm, mind doing it once in a while, I say what I'm saying and it shouldn't bother them. If it's that if, if it's that inefficient as you, what you're saying, if you're saying you coloring your hair shouldn't was, has no effect on anyone else, I agree. And me making but a YouTube video you has no effect on anyone else either. People of color should be treated the same, and I was like, it's a problem that it's still an issue. So is is hair not the same though? I didn't because say people if, of a I didn't say people of color should be treated if, the same. If I said people, everyone should love how they are. You shouldn't make your kid feel like crap because her hair ain't like the neighbor's kid. But that's literally what black women are doing to their children. You just tried to throw in my face about how I grew up and it must have touched a nerve. Now I'm telling you about other kids and how it's touched their nerves and you just said, fuck it. This is weird. I'm not saying fuck it at all. I'm saying at what point are we letting just all sorts of self-expression just go? That's really all I'm saying. So black hair only has one expression. What is that? No, I'm saying that's what you're saying, because apparently you can't have natural black hair and do a bunch of stuff with it. You can. You absolutely can. But there's but like we let's not pretend like black women don't make a lot of money doing hair. 
I didn't say they don't. Like, let's not pretend that Bron- the Bronner Brothers show, you know what I'm saying, in Atlanta does not make a lot of money with people making different creations that, yes, a lot of times requires weaves and extra hair and braids and whatever whatever the case may be. And yet for some reason that hair that they get has to come from another place. Yet the black women who have black hair can't shave their hair off and sell it to anyone. Let me tell you how. So I'm what ma- if that happened? Would that make you feel different? Yes, it would make me feel a lot better because it's the same way as a country works. If you import as much as you export, that's good. If you import less than, if you import way more than you export, there's a problem and your country is going to implode. That's how economics works. Now imagine if we are importing their hair and exporting our money, but we're not importing their, their money and exporting our hair. Now a normal person says, even in their friendships, you always want to wear my clothes, but you don't have shit I want to wear. It's a fucked up friendship at that point. <laughs> Everybody understands that. You always want to drive my car, but you don't have no car. That's a fucked up friendship. You always want to borrow money from me, but I can't borrow none from you. That's a fucked up friendship. Well, what we're doing right now with the hair thing is it's a fucked up friendship because we keep buying theirs, but they won't buy ours. And if we had any respect, just like in any of those positions, you'd stop and say, Wait a minute, until you buy mine, I ain't buying yours. I will say this, though, a little off topic about the hair thing. I saw recently online, they're now selling like the clip-in extensions that look like our hair. I like those, and I've been a fan of that. I've been a fan like, of those. I'm saying so. But I've been a fan of those, because then what you're saying to your daughter when she sees you with the clip-in extensions, she knows there's nothing wrong with her hair. She's just got to grow it. Right. That's all. There's nothing wrong with my hair. You just got to grow it. It's like if I got, if I was like, well, I, I like my penis. Just wish it was a little bit longer. If I got an extension of my penis and the tip three inches was white and the rest of it was black, people would look at me like I was crazy. There was a white woman who got a tan to the point where she was almost my color. Do you know what they did to that woman? They put her in a fucking insane asylum. Why? Because they said, you must be crazy to do some shit like that. And she was. She was nuts. <laughs> but yet black folks will sit up here and bleach themselves to look like white people and never get put in the inside of asylum. That's problematic. A woman as dark as me will walk around with blonde hair looking like a door cell battery or a black and mild cigar. And oh, nobody God. says, well, this is odd, ma'am. Normal people can look at something and say, that's odd. But when it comes to black women, no matter what the fuck they do, it's okay. That's shameful. Right. Somebody said uh, Michael Jackson and Sammy Sosa. When the men do it, it's called out. When men do it, look at how they mess with, um, uh, what's his name? Charlemagne the guy. And we don't even know if he does it. They call that every day. Charlemagne be bleaching himself. So I mean, bleach yeah, yourself. Was bleaching his skin. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is he gets called out. But the women do it and there's no big problem. You know, I met a woman off of Instagram and I was like, man, she fine. I can't wait because I like big titties. And she had huge titties. And I was like, man, I can't wait to get with her. And she was a pretty girl. And again, color doesn't matter to me. But every picture she sent of me, she was brown to light skin. When I met her, she was darker than me. Really? And I said, why would you do that? Then she told me I was color struck. Wait a minute. You're the one oh. who did it, though. You <laughs> must have thought there was something wrong with the way you look when you kept doing this. Now I must accept the lie you tell. But I'm saying now I must accept the lie you've been telling. That would be like me sending you pictures of my dick, but it's pictures of somebody else's dick. And you're like, man, I can't wait to ride that big old 10 inch dick. Then you get here and it's four. And then I tell you it's your fault that you don't like the four inches I just gave you. <laughs> That's what women do. But that's what I'm saying. That's what women do. I'm supposed to accept you with all this clip in and straight hair because you believe you're pretty with it. If that's the case, why don't I get someone that grows it that way? Why would I want the extra work? Because you know it's extra work. If I watch you taking two days to do your hair and put all this crap in it, I'd rather be with somebody that already grew it that way. And and, And in two days, we can go to the movies and hiking. I mean, it might be extra work, but I don't want to be that sentimental person who's like, well, maybe she's just a nice person. 
That's my point. He but, has a good heart. But that's what I'm saying. We as men keep getting told we got to look past the flaws of the individual that they can't look past themselves. So when you hear me talk, I'm passionate about the fact that I have little girls and I had one of them who had a she had she said something to me that hurt me when she was six. But at least her mom listened to me because I may sound rude and mean, but enough people who are around me say he got he makes sense because most of the girls I've ever been with fucked or dated. Guess what they do? They come back and they say, you know what? You made me a better person just being around you because most people won't tell me the truth because I got these big old titties. Most people won't tell me the truth because I got this big old ass. I've never had a man sit there and tell me there's a problem because I want to be honest because I want people to be honest to my children. My little girl at six years old came home crying, said she wanted hair like this little girl named Christy in school. At the same time, her mother was experimenting wearing these big old dumbass wigs and shit. Now, because she's light skinned, she got away with it because they thought she grew it out of her hair, out of her head. But her dark skinned sisters would do the same thing and they look ridiculous. Now, a lot of things you do to yourself is based on how you look. And we all know it. When I was young, Halle Berry had this little bob haircut. Not everybody looked good in that bob haircut, but everybody kept doing it. Not everybody was it looked the bob good. Or the pixie? Uh, what pixie? I don't know what it's called. I thought it was called a bob. It was a pixie. It was but, yeah, it was a pixie. But no, I think it really was a bob. Was it? Come I'm gonna on, ask them. Well, the didn't no, not, 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 when she got older, when you were old enough to know what she was doing, I, that was a pixie cut. But I think when she was young, that oh. was a bob. When she was doing this, uh, this this movie, that was a bob. But a uh, high waisted jeans right now. Not everybody looked good in them. And we need to start telling people the truth. Not everybody looks good in these things. Ain't but, nobody trying to fight every day talking about looks this year. But see, that's what I'm saying. But you could tell a man that. I got <laughs> male friends. When we get ready to go to the club and they put on a shirt, be like, nah, nigga, don't wear that. He laugh, take it off and say, well, what should I wear? Listen, you know no. for a fact men are easier to tell. Even when you dating a man, you can tell a man before y'all go out, no, baby, don't wear that wear something else and he'll wear it because he knows he takes your word for it but if a man did the same thing to a woman she then gets mad i will say that i'm not gonna get mad but i will think about it for the next three days i'll be like damn <laughs> but we want to be told what to do we don't want to go we, we know we'll damn. fuck up as a man i know i'll fuck up if i'm eating your pussy and you tell me don't do it that way do it another way i don't get offended if a woman's giving me head and I tell her that she's doing it wrong, the other Guard nigga, I life. sucked that dick. He didn't have no problem with it. He's like, what the Guard. fuck? Guard for life, listen. But that's, that's what I'm saying. Heart. That's weird. Women are too fragile. So why do I speak it's, the way I... I get it. It's not weird. It's you know what I'm saying is, well, it's weird in this instance. If there were men around, it wouldn't be a problem. But in the black community, these children are just being raised by that fragile person. And that fragility is being passed. I can accept that. So that's why I'm hard because I know that we are in, we're in the red right now. Mm. It's 76% of black kids that just don't have a father at all. So when I did those shows about the two girls, they weren't the only two on YouTube who are bragging about having a bunch of kids. If you go in their comment section, I was shocked and I was showing them. I was saying, it's not just them two. It's a bunch of motherfuckers in the comment section saying, you go girl. And that's weird. But how many like men were those children by? Um, the one who had the 12 kids, and this is sick. All 12 were by 12 different men. The one who had the nine, six of the nine were by different men. There was a girl who came on the show before. Five kids, 21 years old, five different men. 21? 21. Another one who came on the show, beautiful dark-skinned girl, 23 years old. Two kids, two different men, 23 years old. Hmm. Hmm. It's not just one. It's several of them. Did you know there's twice as many black women with kids than black men? Yes. What does that tell you? <laughs> They're Ugh. fucking the same guy. <laughs> They're fucking the same. Literally, and, and I did a story about three men in Tennessee. I did a story about three men in Tennessee. They got 48 women pregnant and had a total of 76 children. That shouldn't even be legal. Wait three whole men. Oh, hold on. As the kids say, three whole men, not three half men. Three men. whole men. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> it's three whole men. That's insane. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
No, I get that laughter because when I did the story, I said, God damn, them <laughs> niggas get a lot of pussy. <laughs> they must really, li- they funny. dick must be the best shit in Tennessee. Or either they're the only niggas fucking in Tennessee. Everybody else need Viagra. Them niggas was off top ready. <gasps> hey, you breathe. Wait a minute. <laughs> like, you got to think about it. It's insane. What county is this? It's several. This nigga was just traveling. He had a bus pass. <laughs> And then, but then the hoes all got together and formed Hotron and decided to put him on child support. Do you know the niggas' child support, the check that they got, and I'm not making this up, was a dollar and 15 cents. And they took this man to jail over this shit. A buck 15. We need it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Who is getting pregnant by this man? (laughs) So you got to stop and think. I have to be hard against these people, man. Why would I? Do you know it doesn't work? For the last 20 years, we've been telling black women they were queens. It's been getting worse. Do you know I just got a video? I ain't never seen no shit like this before in my life. I thought it was a joke. Uh, There's a deaf bitch on Facebook. This is real stop. deaf comedy jam. Stop. She was twerking. <laughs> and then when she would go back to read the comments... In order for her to respond to a motherfucker, let me tell you what she did. God, I don't have no pen. She would write the shit down. Are you? Ta- I know who you're talking. You know about what I'm talking about, and then show it to a motherfucker. Yes. Just are you a wretched deaf bitch? But at one point in time, she was like, "Oh, you guys think I'm playing? You think I'm faking?" She was like, "I'm deaf for real." See. Oh. Okay. They, they okay. had this one of them. This motherfucker was a midget. Looked like her head was stuck in her shoulders uh. and shit. And that bitch was twerking and shit. All short leg and shit. Short arm looking like a T-Rex. Just twerking. And I was like, what the fuck? And then she got in my... I don't care what that motherfucker think. I know I look good. I got the fat ass. I got the fat ass. And I kept saying, what the hell? Is ratchicity just no matter what the fuck? Then somebody got that little bitch pregnant. (laughs) And she was rubbing her she was rubbing her stomach with them little bit ass arms. Talking about I don't know what my baby's gonna be. I know it's gonna be short though. (laughs) (laughs) You gonna make the people mad, cut it out. (laughs) Oh shit. Right, yes, that's the one from the gram. Crazy! And it's 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 too much in the black community. And it's the women. So it's why do I talk about them? Because you got a motherfucker like Paula who got three kids still running around twerking and doing dumb shit, living in the worst conditions on earth. Then had a nerve to get mad at me and show that she got a stack of money. And I was like, if I lived in Philadelphia, I'd immediately rob you, bitch. But Let- you still got to look at these women like, who fucked you? Like who had sex with you? The same. You remember <laughs> what? But but I, 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 but you remember what I just said earlier? <laughs> Twice as many women are have kids than men. So again, I said they fucking who? The same homeless nigga. That's why these most of these black men are hobosexuals. Hobo. Like hobosexuals. Hobo. They are fucking for a place to live. <laughs> Notice how many niggas you know that's getting kicked out of houses. <gasps> That dark skinned well, chick was beautiful, but she was so she wanted that light white damn that light bright damn near white man so much. That motherfucker was homeless and fifteen years older than her, and she still had a baby by him because she wanted a mixed yeah. baby. That's too much. No young woman should get a pussy up to a nigga six years older than my more that ain't got something that he can give her back. I will tell my daughters that anytime you bring a broke nigga home, you leaving with him. <laughs> That's one thing that I've never understood. Like I have literally heard females be like. Ooh, I'm trying to get with such and such because I want my baby to be cute. I want See? my baby to have good hair. Like, what are you, what? Who even says that? They know they ain't going to get no cute baby with me. That's why I had to get money. Because they ain't going to call it cute. If it's my color, it ain't cute. Watch online. Do, do myself, do me a favor, dear. Sure. Go on your Facebook page and put up a picture of a dark skinned baby. Wait a week. Okay. Put up a picture of a mixed baby. Let's Count the comments the and likes. Count the comments and likes. They get that's both babies sh- like, that you think. <sighs> this is where we are as a community. 
So when you say, have I been hurt? Yes. Just like Martin Luther King was hurt, that's why he marched. Just like Malcolm X was hurt. Anybody who's ever tried to make change, it's because they saw the hurt or experienced the hurt. That's where change agents come from. I mean, I definitely understand that, but I just, I don't know. I wish we were at a point where we could teach inclusion in such a way where everything wasn't so polarizing. You know what I mean? But that's Skin what I'm trying to do, though. Air, like just every little thing is just so. Now you understand the hat. They understand it because I told them. I said, why is it that black people are told they can't be Republican? If we're supposed to be the most diverse people in the world, notice that white people can be conservative and liberal. Why the fuck wouldn't black say, oh, we're going to do the same damn thing? Because let me ask you a question. Don't guys typically work harder for you when they don't know they have you, when they think they may have to do a little bit more work to get you, when they know that you have options? If, you, if a guy knows if he come home late, you still going to be there. If he cheat on you, you still going to be there. If he don't have a job, you're still going to be there. Do you think he's going to work hard to make you happy? Or do you think he's just going to sit there and say, shit, no matter what I do, she's going to be here. He's going to live his best life. <laughs> now, let me stop you there. What do you think the Democratic Party is doing when they know black people vote for him regardless? I mean, the same. I really think I'm at the point, though, where I don't really believe in either political party. There you go. They're both bullshit. There you go. And that's what I've been. My audience will tell you. You want to know my opinion. <laughs> but that's what my audience will tell you. I'm doing the same thing. I'm saying to people, hold on, pimp. Left wing. Right wing. Same bird. You need two wings to fly like they're both bullshit. That's what. Hey, look, heads, tails. Same coin, isn't it? So maybe we need to start making them, since they're supposed to be our employees. See, we fucked up because the, the system has changed it. All you got to do is change people's mentality. And all it takes mm -hmm. is about two generations to change people's mentality. It's easy to do if you have the time. Two generations, you'll change people, people's mentality. Right now, people can't remember shit. But when I was growing up, if you met a bitch at the club, you had to remember that whole number. She would tell you all her number. You had to remember this motherfucker and go home and dial it. Right. Now that you have these cell phones, two generations, what's happened? You can't remember shit. We don't even time. know our own phone numbers. What do you mean? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> but I know my grandmama's phone number from 1985. That's I, say, I, know, I know. I know that home phone. <laughs> right. I'll be somewhere and call my grandmama and the only way she can pick it up is in the afterlife. But I know her number. <laughs> she gonna answer. Right. <laughs> Nigga, why you ain't remember nobody else's number? Hey, baby. Right. <laughs> I see your bitch ass still doing sick shit. Oh, grandma, you know me so well. Big facts. Oh, so God. what I'm saying is what they've done is made it to where we don't believe that they work for us, uh, that, that they work for us anymore. Now we believe that we're at their mercy. We believe that we're at the mercy of the governor. We believe that we're at the mercy of the senator. We believe that they can take our money and run off and fuck holes and live lavishly while we struggle and beg them for some crumbs. We believe that it's better to argue at me because I'm a YouTuber that says something you don't like than to argue at the fucker that's running your damn city. Than to argue at the fucker that's running. Nobody argues at them. Think about all the people who got hatred for me and got hatred for Donald Trump, but they don't have hatred for the people who are oppressing them every day in their damn life. That's what but the hat that, represents. The hat represents the hat represents a change of mentality. The hat represents get your head out of your ass. Get choices. Show people you're not going to go along with whatever they say. Make them work for you instead of you work for them. I mean, we live under a mentality of fear. Like if you ever notice when you're driving down a street or a highway and you see the police driving in the opposite direction, everyone slows down. They're not even coming towards you. They're not even looking at you. Our mentality says, oh, my God, it's the police. What do I do? I'll give you a better one. I'll give you it's a better a mentality one. mentality of fear. I'll give you a better one. Have you seen this? I tested it one time because I'm just a dumbass and I've been to jail, so I didn't mind going back. Um, I'm driving, and I know the speed limit was 65. But there was a cop that was on the far lane, and he was only going 55. So every car on 85 refused to pass him. My black yes. ass said, I drove past him and I dared him to pull me over because I said, I know. The, right. But I know the speed limit. Do you understand that most people who are caught up by the law don't know the law? And that's how they got caught up by the law. 
They didn't break the law. Just somebody. So Jason said he remembered that. I did it. I said, fuck this motherfucker. I was doing it like everybody else. I said, eh, I don't want to go past him because my black ass beating got beat. Then I said, fuck it. I'm a YouTuber. I'll record the beat and I'll get a bunch of views. So I just drove on. It's in our minds. They have conditioned us to be afraid. It doesn't even matter. We, we could not be doing anything wrong. And we see these motherfuckers, our heart sinks into our stomachs and we're like, oh shit. Like immediately, immediately, we're conditioned to be afraid. But that's why we fight each other instead of fighting the government. That's why so many people have a problem with me, but they don't have a problem with the people who are oppressing them. I'm not oppressing you. The worst I can do is what? Say something that offends you. And then all you got to do is do what? Never watch me again. Facts. But the people who are fucked like right now, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name. Uh, not Derek Jeter, but uh, the, 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 the soccer player, um, Beckham. Beckham David just, Beckham. yeah, David Beckham just, along with his group, just got an ordinance passed in Miami that's going to allow them to take about two cents off of, uh, they're going to raise the taxes there about two cents on everything so they can build a, a million dollar soccer complex. So none of the money's coming out of their pockets, but they're not letting you go to the game for free. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you did this, and there's nothing wrong with it. If you like soccer, that money should come out of your pocket. That's cool. But what okay. if you don't play soccer? You don't like soccer. Like when I, was, when I was doing my movie, what if everybody had to fucking fund that movie, but they didn't have any interest in it? That wouldn't make any sense. Now, if you That's like enough. soccer, you should, at, you should have your shit raised. But if you don't, you shouldn't. But because we're so dumb, we allowed millionaires to keep doing that. The you only person I respect is somebody like Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones went and got a loan for a billion dollars to build his stadium. $1.3 billion. Got a loan. In three years, Jerry Jones paid that fucking loan back from the bank. Guess who getting all the money from that stadium now? Everything that goes in that stadium, guess where it goes? In his profit. fucking profit. Yes, all profit. It's profit. So this is what I'm saying. We need to understand how shit works. There's a system in place. And let me tell you how that system is. I know it's hard to believe, but the system of America is not racist. If you use it right, it works for you. America's a corporation, actually. There you go. That's what I'm saying. If you use it's it not right, a, really a country. It's a corporation. And if you use it right, it will work for you. The problem is yeah. we tell our children stupid shit like voting doesn't matter. And you know the liberals don't mind them saying that? The same people who are supposed to love you have no problem with telling you you're stupid. When we, The fact that white people came up with this thing called Ebonics. Do you know what Ebonics is saying? You're too lazy and stupid to learn how to speak English correctly. Yeah. But they give us stuff to keep us where we are. And somebody has to step up and say, no, I demand more of you. I'm not going to tell you that because you're black, making a B is just as good as making an A with that white student. No, the fuck it isn't. You're just as smart as that person. So do you do you not believe in like affirmative, affirmative action then? No, not when it comes to um, you made a 70 on it. That guy made a 100, but we need to get a black person in there. So we're going to let him do it. No, I want the best pilot, not the black pilot. <laughs> I don't give a <laughs> shit. I don't care if that pilot walked up in there like this big ass spider that was in my house that I'm still scared because I don't know what his motherfucker at. But if he was flying the plane and he was the best one for the job and he was waving with three of his hands while moving the damn controls with two more while doing some other shit with the other one and jacking off with the last one, as long as we got where we supposed to go, I slap them hands before I leave all You're eight of them. <laughs> You're a mess. Because a lot of people get upset about affirmative action. Like, no, that's not fair. They just let you in because you're black. Like, what? I, I don't like affirmative action because affirmative action tells us that we can do less and still get the same thing. And it does not encourage us to be better. Like I said, I believe in a meritocracy. Because let me tell you something. If affirmative action was true, a lot of brothers wouldn't be in the NBA because they'd be putting some damn white boys in there. We need some white guys in here. There's too many niggers. So just put a couple white guys in there. Be like, but but he's not better than this dude. Yeah, but we uh, need a couple of them on here. We wouldn't want that. True. I don't want that because I believe in black folks so much that I want them to not give us shit. So when we take shit, they can't say shit. Y'all didn't hear me. What about all black colleges? Yeah, I believe they should be able to have them. They should be able to have all white colleges too. <laughs> I do. <laughs> 
I believe that it should be. You should go to a historically white college. They should be able to say it. This was. <laughs> Whoa, My great, you? great, great granddad went here. There wasn't a nigger in sight. Still isn't. <laughs> uh-huh. That is should be he to have it. Nah, because I'm going to be mad if I see some niggas working in the kitchen. No, that's the only time time we let them in here is when we need. That's the only time. Look, it's the niggas' fault for taking the job. But it's the niggas' fault for taking the job. You know you went to that historically white college. (laughs) You know when you applied, when they told you the mammy position was open. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You do what you did when you, you you never accept a mammy position. Well, them kids do need some. The kid do need some suckling. Here you go. No. You're fucking round giving people the witch's milk. Not the witch's milk. <laughs> you need to stop now. I'm a southerner. I know all these terms. Y'all know the witch's milk is. The bitch ain't pregnant, but she's still lactating. You witch. Listen. Listen, I'm in Georgia. Georgia. That's where I'm from. ATL shouted. <laughs> I know all that shit, but we gotta. We we as black folks, we do have to understand. The more we get on our own, the less they can take away. Hmm. Never take like. Think about it. If you have to constantly get something from the dude you with, what happened if he get mad at you? He stops giving you shit. He gonna take and it. then your shit up luck. The smart bitch take what I kept saying. I said I dated a lot of black chicks, and I dated the white chicks. If I get a white chick two hundred dollars for something. But she put that shit in her bank account. The black chick will spend every fucking dime and be waiting for me to give him another dime. I'm like, you're a dumb bitch. Like, I purposely gave you more to see if you'd save. Yeah. So if anything ever fucking happened to me, you'd be like, nigga, you ain't got to worry about it. I got some of that money that uh, you gave me saved, and I'm going to help you out now. Nope. Them bitches spend every dime. I'm like, God, <laughs> dog, you didn't to say none of that shit, did you? None, none, none of it. You asked for a sandwich. The sandwich was $8. I gave you 20. You brought me no change. And <laughs> she you bought a drink, some chips. She wanted some candy. Right. You weren't smart enough to say, well, shit, I normally would eat this. So I'm going to still eat this. And I'm going to put no. the rest of that shit in my bra. <clears throat> and if no. I do this enough, these pennies are going to turn into dimes, going to turn into nickels, going to turn uh, going to turn into nickels, going to turn into dimes, going to turn into quarters, going to turn into dollars. That's what a smart person does. But that's why I was talking about the hair thing, because there's no reason that an individual should be working at Chick-fil-A. Excuse me. It's a black chick. So let me change that. There's no reason a person should be working at Popeye's. And while working at Popeye's, got a two hundred dollar hairdo. Because the one thing you don't see white girls do is working at a menial job and having $200 worth of hair done. You don't see that. When you go go to any Walmart, them white bitches be having flat... I was just going to say some really lim- white shit, and I'm just not going to say it. No, but I'm saying, you go to Walmart, them, black, them white bitches have a white, limp-ass hair, flat hair on their head, looking like a mess, and they don't have no damn drawn-on face. But you watch these black chicks barely have enough money to do anything. Why do you think so many black chicks are selling pussy now? Just to get the regular shit. And you know it because you've seen them in that group. Openly selling pussy. Proudly selling it. I've seen them. <laughs> so what I'm talking about is a thing that's real. We are in we are in cold red right now. And you don't yeah. need someone that's going to say it nice to you. Because nice makes it worse. You don't want your doctor to tell you you got cancer nicely. You want him to aggressively try to get this shit out of you. You don't want him to pussyfoot around what you have. You want them to tell you exactly what you have so we can put a plan together to get rid of this shit. So do you understand what I'm doing? I am the surgeon that had to come and tell you something that's really bad, or I'm the oncologist that had to tell you something that's really bad, that you got cancer, but there's no real way to tell you because we got to fix it. And and when we fight this cancer, because this cancer is going to be hard. I had a dude to come on the show, and it's really sad. It happened the other day. I can't, he came on. He asked me could I help him and his wife, a uh, black couple. Asked me could I help him and his wife. Uh, get some money so she can go to this hospital in Mexico uh, to try a uh, experimental treatment for her cancer. And you got to understand, I didn't know who this fuck, old fucker was. I thought he might have been somebody trying to scam me. And halfway through it, I started to think, in my mind, I'm not going to lie, I started to think, I think they're scamming me. And you got to understand, I didn't know who this Uh-oh. Sorry. I thought he might have been somebody trying to scam me. Me. Because the people <laughs> in the audience were saying, well, she don't look skinny. 
and she got all her hair. Something's not right. So I was listening to the people, but we got them the money and it went to them. She really had cancer. She died uh, last week. Well, damn. Three weeks after she came on my show, she was dead. So then I realized at that point, man, you don't know what people are really going through in the world. And <clears throat> nobody knows when their time is, is up. Nobody knows. So I want to do the best I can every day. So when I talk to you, it's the same as I talked to the brother before who I tried to squash a beef with, but the weirdo still wants to have a beef with. And the other brother that I try to talk to because there's a lot of building that needs to be done. And fighting is not building. When I bring up these problems, it's not because I'm trying to fight with you. It's because I'm trying to get you to change. It's because I'm trying to get me to change. Nobody needs to change more than me. Every day I wake up, I realize there's some shit I need to do that I need to do better. But I'm not going to sit there and have my daughters look at me and then look at TV and think that their daddy is okay with that shit. At least they know when they get to a certain point, I can be disappointed because most black girls never have that. Do you think any of those black girls on that twerking and selling pussy on, on Facebook openly got a daddy? You think anyone got a daddy in their life? Clearly not. And if they do, they must hate him. There you go. But if we had more of that, if we had that, but the women have such low self-esteem that they say things like, well, I just want to switch it up. What's wrong with having switching up my hair? There's nothing wrong with switching up your hair, but I've dated plenty of black girls who were natural and every day they'd have a new damn hairdo with their natural hair. Mm-hmm. And they loved their hair. And when, and then finish the story. When my daughter was crying about the little girl, Chrissy, um, she said, I want hair like her. And she wanted hair like her mom who had that same kind of hair. And to watch my kid cry like that when I giving my kid everything. There yeah. wasn't a toy she didn't have. There wasn't a, this little girl got more stamps in her um, passport than most adults. There's nothing she hasn't had. She's spoiled. And to see that I couldn't give her that. And I looked at her mom. I said, do you know where she's getting that from? She said, the little girls in school. I said, no, bitch, you. Because she you gets up every day. Myself. I didn't say it like that. But I do talk like that, but I didn't do it that. I said, no, she's getting it from you. I said, she loves you. And if she wakes up and sees that you look different than her, how do you think that makes her feel? Because the person she wants to grow up to be at six years old is you. My little girl, you sit there and grab her mama's breast because she wanted breast. That's what she wanted for Christmas. She wanted titties. (laughs) Smart girl. That's why I was like, God, I don't, I don't know this having a little girl. This is weird. I don't like their conversations. I walk in on him having conversation. He, he's cute. What the fuck you say? Listen. I'm saying I'm not I'm not good at that. I want my little girl to not like dick at all. No. I don't even want her to know people named Richard. Let her live. It's fine. She's growing. But the point is, when she said it, I told her mom, do you know her mom not only cut her hair off and started growing it back naturally, but then forced her then in turn, not forced, like beat them up, but her sisters then did it. Then her mother yeah. did it. You know, now my daughter's 12 years old mm-hmm. and um, has no interest. Now, again, by 16 comes, she might be a hair hatted hooligan. I don't know. But right now, she loves what she can do with her hair and all the stuff she does. And she talks about how, oh, the students in class think they love my mo. She'll sometimes do a little mohawk and now she knows how to do it herself. Do you know most black girls don't know how to do their own hair because they never were taught to do it? That's true. It's sad that these bitches know how to take care of weed, but they don't know how to take care of their own hair. I watch a bitch sit up there and wash that weed, brush that weed, put that weave over the damn curtains, and let that weave dry, and do all kind of shit to that fucking weed. But they can't do anything to their own hair because no one taught them. But if they had mothers who learned how to do their hair, their mothers would teach their daughters how to do their hair. The girl who I dated that had natural hair, she didn't have the hair like yours. She had the so-called natural, nappy hair. Every night she'd put in these little bantu knots, take two seconds. Because she, she had been doing it for so long. Every morning yeah. she'd get up and let them damn things loose. And I'd be like, you can't go nowhere. I'm getting in that ass before you leave because you're looking good. Mm-hmm. And she liked that because she looked good. And I acknowledged that she looked good the way God made her. I didn't wait until she turned around and looked like a half a damn, a half a black girl. Because all black girls are trying to do is look mixed now. That's, That's why they want to whoop your ass. You know, I mean, black men need to acknowledge the beauty in their women, the way they yes. are. I mean, women but are the women need to accept it though. Validation. That's but the just... women need to accept it because remember what you said earlier, you said women dress and stuff like that, not for us, but for each other. We do it for each other. It's yeah. kind of a competition. So if I'd sit there and try to tell you, you look good. I've had plenty of girls tell me, Oh, I look, you look good with your natural hair. Two days later, that bitch got head full of yak. Well, yeah. 
Because what just, I like, said don't thanks matter. Said, thanks so much. But this bitch over here better say something because if she don't, then it's an and, issue. And that's one of the most hurtful things about being a man is that you can love your girl, but your opinion doesn't matter as much as the world does. Yeah, unless you find a woman who loves herself, it's kind of futile. And in our community, it's very difficult. Because remember, mm. these little girls didn't grow up with their fathers and they didn't get a chance to be little princesses. That's one thing that every little girl needs to be able to be. Their daddy's girl. Because daddy's the only man in your life that actually wants to hang out with you and wants the best for you and don't want no pussy from you. Everybody yeah. else you meet from that day forward? It's a trap. <laughs> I'm friendly to bitches, but I'd like a little puss on top of that. It's a trap. <laughs> That's why women that kill me were telling me, he's just my friend. Bitch, offer to suck his dick and see if he's taken. There's plenty of girls oh who are just my friend who I offer them to fuck them. They be like, no, we're friends. But it ain't the no man, dude. The male friend. Yes, but there's no dude that you'll say, you know, we've been friends for 13 years. Now I'd like to suck your dick. He'd be like, no, girl, we're just friends. No, he he's taken just it. He's just patient is what he is. He That's right. Thank you. So that's the point. So if, if these little girls had their fathers, there's certain things that they wouldn't do. Like the girls that's out there being sugar babies and shit like that. Well, if they had their daddies, they wouldn't have to fuck to get their damn light so bill weird. paid. They wouldn't have to fuck to get their uh, credit card bill paid. They literally would have yeah. a father to do that. My, my daughter fuck when she turns 16, 17, it's going to be because she like dick. It ain't going to be because she uh, doesn't have something because her dad gets it. She ain't going to be fucking to get her light bill paid. She ain't going to be fucking oh. to get her insurance paid. She ain't going to be get she ain't going to be fucking to get her sprint bill paid. Just at least pay half of it. I suck your dick for half. I will call him and work out a payment plan with him. I, my girl ain't going to have to do that. Oh, but the majority of these black girls, they do. I I'll make an arrangement. I'm just different. <laughs> I let that shit get cut off. <laughs> That's why motherfuckers start getting a Google phone. I mean, uh, the damn Google lines. <laughs> I, I fuck oh, around. God. I didn't had all kind of shit cut off. I remember I had my water cut off one time because I forgot to pay it. Because I have so many bills, I forgot to pay it. So me and my daughter was in this big ass mansion with no water on. Oh, but we had that big ass pool outside. <laughs> And when and that that food, I said, God, they, I said when business. can you come turn the water back on? Because the water bill was like $1,500. I said, God, dog, how what did it get that mean? high? So I paid them, but they was like, well, you we can't come out today. I was like, I can't be living up in here with no water. They said, well, we can be out there sometime tomorrow night. So I'm looking at my daughter. She's looking at me. I was like, well, we got to use what the bathroom. I'm going to fuck along flush. Here. But I, I grew up broke. So I knew how to make the water flush or the toilet flush. we getting the water. I knew how to do this. And the water Right, and I was telling her, you too bougie. I'm going to show you how to make this shit work. Then I turned around, since we had gas, bought that motherfucking water, ran her a tub full of water. This is what okay. we going to do. And this is another thing that we as black people don't know how to do. If the internet went off, do you know how many people would just kill themselves? Because their whole life is Facebook Live? I'm going live. I'm going live. That's where they feel the best. Why do you think so many more women go live than men? Because that's where women get validation at. Hell yeah. They go on live and everybody tell them how they pretty and they inbox be full and they DM. And then a woman sit up there and dress half naked. You send a DM. These niggas is in my inbox. That's the equivalent of McDonald's putting up a fucking commercial on TV and then get mad that they trying to, that, that people keep trying to get a Big Mac. Look at these yeah. niggas out here trying to get these Big Macs. Yes. It is, it is the same. So you advertising and you got what you advertise for. And we need to get to a point because we are matriarchal people, black folks, we are losing. We have to change that dynamic, put more fathers in these homes and have more women with enough self-esteem that even if you like dick, why you got to have babies in the process? I know plenty of white hoes from college. Them white girls suck everybody dick at the party and still graduated. <laughs> I imagine. Let's not go there. Yeah, I'm That's just saying these hoes with hoes, but they still got their degrees. And then I hear oh. black women say weird stuff to me like, oh, well, they be having abortions. Um, I mean, whatever they had to do. <laughs> I mean, why would you just say they be having abortions? Why is it that they might not be, maybe they own birth control. 
The white girl I used to date, that bitch ate birth Not control. She ate them birth control pills. If I came in her too much, she ate too. There's nothing yeah. wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with knowing, look, this is fun and this is family. Yeah. Black people, we don't know how to separate fun from family because we never have families. We just always having fun. Well, yeah, they destroyed our family units long ago. But we destroyed our family, meaning we continue the cycle. You remember what I told you? It only takes a couple of generations to fuck people up. In yeah. a couple of generations, when the Democrats gave us the, well, we're going to give you this welfare money, but you got to kick the man out. It only took two generations. By the time the mid-80s came, black folks was full of crack and fucked up. And that is such a, a broader agenda, though. Yes. So, like, ugh. Yes. So many more topics. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, let me tell you what I'm going to let you do. Because I think this was a very good conversation, meaning we went, we ran the gambit of everything. Yeah, the, the, the emotional gamut. But we have to understand us as black folks, generally we're all passionate. We're, we're very passionate yeah. people as black people. So you were being passionate, I was being passionate. I think the one thing we don't do is accept each other's passion and try to understand it. And it seems like we went from the not understanding it to the understanding it at least, not agreeing, just an understanding. So... Mm -hmm. And we got to do this more with each other to understand. So I know it's late on the East Coast because it's almost 12 o'clock on the West Coast. I was about to say, it's like 1.30 in the morning. Yeah, it's, so, so I was going to say, what I would like to do is to stop and then you can maybe get together some more questions, get to with your girls and ask them uh, what they might want to ask and then whatever. And I know a lot of people are going to try to find you and look you up and they, your DM's going to be full uh, after this. Yeah, I got to see what my friends have to say about this. <laughs> but but um, we could continue... Anytime you want to talk to me and ask me anything, because um, I believe we have to learn how to dialogue with each other. And even though we're Absolutely. being passionate, we do have to under get to the point where we care about each other enough to try and understand. It's not always like, because it's like me and my daughter. It's hard for me sometimes to understand that stupid shit she do. But I know if I don't want her to run to the to, to Jamar Quavius on the corner, I have not to, I, I know, I'm not him. But if I don't want her to run to him, I must try to understand her. And all I want to do is try to understand the same black women I talk shit about are the same black women I want to talk to because I do want to understand it. I do want to understand why they do what they do. To me, if I can understand it, then I can address it better. And if you're willing to open and say it to those black women, the more you're willing to be an open book and just explain why you're there, what you're going through. There's no shame in me telling people, hey, look, I grew up this way and this is how it affected me. Maybe if more people knew, less people would do. Because what's happening to us as black people is that there's a cycle going on. And we're only doing what we know. So if you were molested, you allow your daughter to be molested. And if you molested as a dude, sometimes you go out and molest. If you saw your mama boyfriend whoop her ass, you didn't grow up to be a person who whoops ass. Because hurt people hurt people. And the one thing that a person who's had their psyche broken knows how to do is break a psyche. People would think that someone who's been fucked over is going to be nice. Nope. They're more likely to repeat what they know how to do. If you saw your dad build houses for 12 years of your life, when you get 13, you know what you'll know how to do? Build a house. Even if you weren't trying. You were around it so much, you learned it. You around cooking crack so much, you nine and know how to whip it. It's common sense. Nature versus nurture. And right now, we as black people aren't getting enough nurturing. I'll let you finish. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, we, <laughs> we came to a peaceful conclusion here because mm -hmm. it could have went left a couple times. Yes. And I'm glad that it didn't. Thank you for letting me ask my questions. Mm hmm and I will say this to you. You wanted the first, this is the first time I've ever said this to a woman. I'm glad you didn't let me get off. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> first of all, I could talk around anything. If you thought you were going to get off that easy, it wasn't going to happen. So I said, I said, I'm going to get off of you. He was like, no, well, I won't get off. Nope. I was, and I said, well, I don't know if she just stand on just to make it go worse. I didn't know where you were going I with this shit. Done. I was like, I don't know where she's going with this shit. I'm going to bed. 
You motherfucking tired. I'm going to get my dick sucked. This is irritating. I need to relax. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I need to. Well, this is irritating. This was fun. Yes, and it was. I will get some more questions for you. So you be ready. All right, and I will, and I want to thank you so much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know all of her uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram stuff, just go to the website. It'll be there. You better click to it and go to it. Uh, you have a lot of, uh, like, artsy stuff. I see you have piercings. Can you let them know what you do? I think that's your company, right? Oh, yeah. I am a professional licensed body piercer. I work in Atlanta, Georgia. So if anyone wants piercings, you can hit me up on my Instagram, which is she pierced it, just like how it sounds. She pierced it. Um, Yeah. All right, and I'm going to put, again, I will put that link up there. Y'all make sure y'all go follow her, and y'all make sure if you are a piercings person, we'll talk about that when you come back, too, uh, about <laughs> yes. all that stuff. I got uh, stories. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to hear about that, because I think that a lot of piercing and tattooing has gone too far in the black community, too. I don't mind mm -hmm. them, but I, when it's become the norm of everyone, that seems weird to me. So then we should probably talk about this next. What does that say? Slave? Yep. You're a, whose slave are you? We'll talk about it next time. All right. I, there it is. Somebody done branded her already. We're going to talk about it next time. <laughs> All right. Well, I tell you what, dear. Thank you so much. And how do you say your first name? I don't even. Ariana. Okay. Ariana. Okay. Cool. I didn't want to fuck it up. Ariana Grande. Thank you, guys. This is Ariana Grande. My daughter oh. keeps saying, that's not how you say it. It's grand. Or is it grand? <laughs> or am I, I'm saying, every time I say it wrong, she said she corrects me. And I'm like, I don't listen to this. Is it not grande? I think it's grande, and I say grand, and she <laughs> she laughs. Grande. So okay, like so, it's like the thing you get at Starbucks. Got it. All right. Well, th <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, dear. Go to bed and hit me up when you're ready to do this again. All right. Thank you for having me. No problem. Peace out. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this. This was a good day. Y'all got me up to nine oh nine. That was um. Oh shit! You got me up to a thousand. There it is. Hi. Right. Let me read who all the people were that got me up to a thousand. We had a good day, though, today. Not everything ended nicely, but I tried. With every one of these people, I tried to fix it. Y'all can't say I didn't. The brother from Canada, I tried to fix it. Um, the brother from Europe, I tried to fix it. I really keep trying to fix it with these people because I don't want to fight people. So we're going to go ahead and read the... Uh, the donations that came across up there on the top right now. $120 just came from, J damn, JC did it twice. JC put $120 on it and he said, keep changing minds. I love you, bro. JC, love you back, bro. Then he said, uh, Tommy, keep it going. Changing minds every day. Love you, bro that one man donated $140 within minutes. No, within literally like within a minute, within $60, within 60 seconds. It says 1140 and then it says 1139. He gave 120, then he gave 120. BKC put $5 on it, says she don't get it. This conversation, let me stop turning my neck over there. I'm fuck around and break my neck. Let me bring it over here. He said she don't get it. This conversation went over her head like a shower nozzle. Uh, Kami, I think she was at the show. And I, I, she says, I keep saying her name wrong. It's been a while since I've donated, but thank you again for the uh, mental stress you undergo to simply talk about what's right. I don't always agree, but most of the times your logic and stance is unmatched. Man, you have more patience than me. She made my head hurt. This is why I'm afraid of dating black women. I just deal. I just can't deal with that attitude, says Jamari. David Jan says, great show, Tommy. Crispy Leg says, Sarah Palin never said that she could see Russia. That was Tina Fey on uh, SNL. I, that, these things, what did she say exactly? You're right, because sometimes they get misquoted. I will agree with you on that. Sometimes they get misquoted, and I think that was misquoted. I will give you that. <clears throat> but what exactly did she say? Um, let me move this over here so I can see it.
You said bring back the ether? I should. Latoya said 1100. Nah, I don't think we'll reach 1100. But we'll reset. Uh, let's see. Um, David Jan said, great show. We put $10 on it. King Damon said, Tommy, even though I don't always agree with how you convey your message, I gained so much respect and admiration for you over the past few weeks. You're in a league of your own, brother. I will definitely keep watching as a fan. Thank you, King Damon. Lady Steele put $50 on it and said, thank you for the insight and perspective. Jamari put $2.13 on it and said, if you, if you can guess this lyric, I'll put $3 on it. Guess what lyric? You didn't say it. You just said, if you can guess this lyric, I'll put $3 on it. Pete the Pirate put $5 on it and said, it's a jungle out there. It's not much, but it, but a little helps. Look, Pete, I told you guys, if it's like two and a half, 2,500 people there, if everybody gave a dollar, think about what would happen. Um, Mon Montreal Rather says, zone isn't explaining shit. And he put a dollar on it. RKC said, love you, Tommy. Let's piss your haters off. Put $5 on it. My man Private is threw $50 on it. Mexi man and Mexi man and cheese put $2 on it. Said, if you don't joke on someone you're cool with, then you were never cool with them. You were trying to use them for something. Friends joke on each other. And that's the norm. When they don't, they're using you. You were trying to use them for something. I would love to talk to you about that. I don't know exactly what that means. Uh, one said zone could be using this time talking to uh, talking to you instead of talking to someone else about you. Exactly. Montreal. It's a weird thing. J one nine nine PLC says, uh, but just gave $10. Aries 37 gave 14. Elicio Corona gave $20. Big hurt gave 504. Big hurt gave $5 and said, just because Dre gaming network said, I'm sorry. I said something during last night's stream and got banned. I'm not a troll and I enjoy your content and would like to continue my interactions in the live stream. If you could unban me, it would be most appreciated for your kind gesture. See there. He got blank. He got banned. He came back and he donated last night. I had to block people simply because I was telling them if you cannot follow the rules and I want you guys to follow the rules. I'm not tough on people just to be a dick. I'm tough on people because I think it matters what I'm saying. James Aguirre said, hashtag ban the hair hats. Coco Mom said, love you, Tommy Sotomayor. Love Tommy Sotomayor and his commentary. Thank you. That was $5 and $5.41. Joe put $5 on it. Thank you, Joe. Elwin put um, $5.55 on it. Said, what's up, Tommy? I just donated before you said my real name. No problem, man. Been listening for about four years. Great job. Keep up the work. My man G. Lopez, that was this was um, last night, put $5 on it. Thank you. Knowledge 5106 says, I'll put another five on it. Lady Steele put $20 on it. My girl, Unique Laura, put $5 on it and said, eye opening. Thank you, Tommy. Joe put $10 on it and said, good job. Teddy on fire. Daniel put $5 on it and said, keep up the good work. Her loves her put $5 on it and said, watching your videos have changed the way I look at myself and life. Thanks, Tommy. Recovering BT 1000. David John put $5 on it. Josh the Squash put $5 on it. Said, Tommy, can you open the phone lines after the show for people who disagree with you? Because I'm afraid to oppose the things you say in a chat. Tomorrow night, our lives will change. Tomorrow night, you will entertain an execution. What a sight. Tomorrow night. I think what I may do tomorrow night, because I haven't done it in a while, is let you guys call in. My man uh, Rizzo, D. Rizzo, put $5 on it. Mike Easter, uh, we were already there. Mike Easter put that 160 in Erica Cox, so that's where we were last night. Uh, Andre WP116901 put $5 on it, said, sending love to all, Mr. Tommy Soto, Soto, uh, Tommy Soto Nation and Smash Brothers. Uh, Joe put $10 on it, said, the only thing I agree with Trump on is keeping these people out of here. <laughs> G. Lopez put $10 on it. Uh, Sergeant uh D U S M uh Sergeant D U S M C R uh, S M C retired. Sorry. Sergeant D here. Love what you do, you keep it real. Not many people will say the truth and call out the pieces call out the pieces of shit for what they are. Thank you. Simplify. Jay says, Tommy, I wish I could send more, but there you go, bro. Keep America strong. He gave me two eighty nine. Guys, when you send something, when you send anything. 
It helps me continue to give you guys this kind of program. And think about it. I have people tell me they've gotten rid of their cable because they watch me so much. Wayne put $5 on it. It just came through. It says, awesome show tonight. It got heated, but both of you had good points. A lot of her were coming from a place of sympathy, and yours was reason. Men and women deeply, deeply need to work on communications, and your live gives people a real example of how it works. That's why I do it. That's why I tell everybody who comes on, I don't want to talk to you before. I don't want this to look set up. So I didn't know her at all, and that's what made it fun to me. I didn't know her in the least, and that was fun. Jamari put a dollar on it and said, my bad, the number was a part of Warren G's song. What number? Oh, the five? Three? No, that's not the one. Oh. Yeah, that's his address. That's his, uh, that's where, that's uh, not, uh, his, his area code, 213. But they had a lot of songs with 213 in it. All you skirts know what's up with 213. So I hooked the left on 21 and Lewis, some brothers shooting guys, dice. So I said, let's do it. Um, they had a lot of songs with 213. They even had a group with him, uh, Snoop, and um, Nate Dog was called 213. Uh, JC put another $80 on it, and he's the one who brought me up to $1,100. So JC put $320 in the coffers tonight. Thank you so much. And every one of you guys, thank you so much. The young lady who came onto the show, I know it got heated. Thank you to Zone for coming on earlier. Thank you, brother, uh, to um, the Seven Deadly Sins for coming on earlier. Uh, thank you, brother. Thank you for all of you guys for talking. Uh, didn't get a chance to do the Sinetta because Sinetta said he got busy and mine went over, so he wants to try to do it tomorrow. But if I can't do a call-in show tomorrow, I'll definitely do one over the weekend. Thank you guys so much. I am out. <laughs>